poor in Europe than it is, uh, for instance, in the U.S. and a lot of other places. Uh, and uh, this will keep Europe sort of uh, in the shadows of, of the world economy. Uh, and, uh, and the Eastern European countries is a sort of a center for that. Um, so overall, what do we misunderstand about the economy? Why, why are economists actually so bad at, at, at predicting recession? <laughs> and how should we adjust our thinking to make sure that we don't miss the next recession, which you know, could, could either be around the corner or, or it could be postponed? Uh, in terms of, of that, you know, uh, I think it's uh, recessions that you do uh, that that you do foresee. They don't they don't happen because uh, if you can see a recession coming uh, well enough in advance, that you can react to it. So, for instance, you see now there was a lot of talk uh, some <laughs> a while ago about the the yield curve in the U.S. predicting a recession. Well, we know that the Fed uh, is keeping a close eye on that indicator, and that means that uh, they will react. If it is, uh, if the if it's, it's a strong enough signal of recession, then the Fed will will act, and then the recession will not happen. So uh, when people start to use uh, these indicators, they they stop predicting the recession because we can actually react to it. Recessions are not sort of natural disasters coming from outside. They are actually uh, man-made and uh, and can be prevented by by actions. So so almost uh, in their nature, uh, the only recessions that do happen are the ones that we didn't foresee. Um, so uh, so it's uh, it's uh, not possible really to to uh, to uh, to foresee recessions. But what you can do is. You can say sometimes there's an elevated risk. You can say, what is, are we in a period where the risk of recession is high or is it low? And definitely, I think right now we are in a period still of a, of a high recession risk uh, that um, um, is caused by simply the recovery being so mature uh, uh, globally. That's, that's a very important one. And also all the political uncertainty and everything else going on, the unknown territory for, 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 for economic policy. So interest rates... Oh, sorry. So the recession risk is elevated, but yeah. it's less elevated than it was uh, a few weeks ago. And that's uh, the positive thing. Thank you so much for all of the insight, Lars Olsen. Uh, there now uh, coming up, uh, Caroline will be joined by Nera Chage. They'll be speaking to Stephen Macklow Smith. We're talking Fed, Euro and trade. Family property. This is a live message from the Survivalist Network. There are reports of an impending zombie apocalypse reaching London. But don't panic. Our intel shows that for £199 a month with 0% APR representative, you can locally access the Toyota Hilux Invincible, the only vehicle with the build strength to withstand savage hordes of the undead. Once inside your Toyota Hilux, stay on this frequency for updates. You'll be fine. 0% 0% APR representative on new sales of Hilux Invincible over 42 months. £199 per month. Customer deposit of £9,701 when financed through Access Toyota by 16th of December 2019. £12,525 optional final payment. Subject to status to over 18s. Indemnities may be required. Condition supply. Toyota Financial Services. In the dictionary, a podcast is this. A digital audio file made available on the internet typically is a series of which new installments can be received by subscribers automatically. But on TuneIn, a podcast is this. I'm Adam Grant, and this is Work Life, my podcast with Ted. I study how to make work not suck. And it's defined like this. Blackout is a suspense-filled thriller from Endeavor Audio and Q Code. From news, sports, to pop culture, comedy, and beyond, define your own podcast possibilities on TuneIn. Get social with TuneIn. Follow TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to discover what's happening in the app and around the world. Be the first to know about upcoming games and the hottest new music. Follow at TuneIn and always be in the know. Four hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe for this Friday, the 8th of November in London, coming up this hour. Is it all priced in? U.S. and Chinese negotiators agree on a tariff rollback if and when a trade deal is reached, but stocks and futures slip from Asia to Europe. And in Europe, Jean-Claude Juncker says that President Trump will spare autos from tariffs ahead of next week's deadline. Election pledges. Boris Johnson announces post-Brexit visas for doctors and nurses. And Spaniards go to the polls for the fourth time in as many years on Sunday. I'm Leanne Gerrans with World News. And calling all billionaires. Bloomberg learns that Saudi Arabia is looking to some of its wealthiest citizens to buy Aramco stock ahead of its much-anticipated IPO. That's all straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe on DAB Digital Radio London, Bloomberg 1130 New York, Bloomberg 991 
Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 1061, Boston, Bloomberg 960, San Francisco, Cirrus XM, Channel 119, and around the world on BloombergRadio.com and via the Bloomberg Business app. Good morning from London. I'm Caroline Hepke. And I'm Neera Chahich. Good morning everyone. It's coming up to 8 or 1 a.m. in London, 9 or 1 if you're listening in Paris, Frankfurt or Brussels. And what a day we had in the markets yesterday, Caroline, mm. all based on trade optimism. We haven't even heard from President Trump yet. No, exactly. And that does seem to be fading just a little bit in the markets today because obviously the U.S. and China, you know, saying that they have agreed on potentially rolling back tariffs if they do get a phase one deal, but then the deal has not been signed. No, absolutely not. And there's a lack of details into what mm-hmm. might happen as well. And really, you start to ask yourselves whether risk assets got ahead of themselves yesterday. If we take a look at the stock 600, uh, one and a half minutes into the equity market open here in Europe, we're down three tenths of a percent. So we snap five days of gains. We hit a 2015 high in yesterday's session. Looking at industry groups, most of them actually in the red, commodity producers, travel and leisure, financial services underperforming. Regional equity benchmarks uh, posting some losses. FTSE 100 uh, down four tenths of a percent. The CAC 40 is lower by four tenths of a percent. Uh, Just waiting for for a, a, a print on the DAX, but we're seeing the IBEX and FTSE MIB edge into the red as well. Uh, the optimism took the S&P 500 to another record yesterday. Uh, we're a little softer on futures today. S&P and NASDAQ futures lower by a tenth of a percent. Dow futures struggle for direction. And what a global bond sell-off. The 10-year Treasury yield hitting a three-month high, uh, one of the worst days since President Trump got elected. We take a pause on that today, down one and a half basis points on the 10-year Treasury yield, but still above 190. Is 2% where the buyers start to meaningfully come back in. We've had some bond auctions this week as well that have gone well. That tells you something about demand for treasuries. The 10-year bond yield jumped 10 basis points yesterday. uh, Biggest jump since 2018. Down two basis points today. Negative 25. But if we get two or three days more of moves like the ones yesterday, do we get back into positive territory and stay there? The 10-year gilt yield down two basis points. 77 handle. Interesting news conference from Mark Carney Mm. of the BOE. He wouldn't be pushed at all on whether rate cuts were coming, but it definitely was a downbeat outlook. And yields are lower in Europe generally. Uh, the Bloomberg dollars held up, even with some of the risk on uh, all through the week. The yen's gotten a little bit crushed, along with other safe havens like gold. Gold heading for its worst week since 2017. And FX as well, the yuan, maintaining its strength through seven, even if it's pulled back a little from the trade we saw yesterday. Gold trading at 1472.20. Oil on the back foot, Caroline. Yeah, we also have plenty of stocks to watch this morning and earnings. Bloomberg's Lisa Pham joins us in our London studio. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Uh, Rishma- well, first of all, earnings missing estimates because of the protests in Hong Kong. They prompt a slump in revenue. So quite a different story for Richemont versus LVMH and, and some others. Yes, and so the Hong Kong protests have been dragging on for quite a few months now and it has had a bad impact on the luxury sector. Hong Kong used to be a hub for mainland Chinese tourists to go shopping and bulk up on things like the luxury handbags and things like that. So it hasn't been great for them. Richmond did uh, did post um, a, a earnings miss and uh, in the, a slump in the revenue for the Hong Kong market as well. The shares haven't opened just yet, but it is indicated to go down lower. Mm, okay, so that's one we'll watch and bring you in a moment. As for car makers, the European Commission president telling a German newspaper that Donald Trump won't impose the tariffs on the EU that he has threatened in terms of, uh, of cars and car parts next week. Quite confident words too. Mm, yes, it, it was quite interesting in that report because he was talking about how he felt like he was a, an informed man on this decision. Um, so there has been a lot of focus on the trade wars between the US and China but obviously if there's any like trade tensions between the US and Europe then that's going to have a very big impact and should be very closely watched. The auto industry is very important to Germany so it will be good news for the auto stocks. Okay, and then just lastly, tobacco stocks. The vaping firm Juul is going to stop selling its mint-flavoured nicotine products in the US, so we should be watching that sector too. Yeah, so the tobacco industry has been under an enormous amount of pressure over the past few years. Um, Regulatory pressure as well as competition from these vaping companies such as Juul. Uh, So with this like latest news, uh, the reason for Juul deciding to stop selling the mint-flavoured products is because... 
there's been studies that have been showing that children have been frequently using these like mint vaporizers and so they're trying to clamp down on youth addiction to e-cigarettes essentially mm, okay interesting uh, yeah and just to update our listeners so the auto parts um component of the US stock 600 is down but not that significantly down three tenths of one percent it's kind of in the middle of the pack in terms of sector performance on uh, the US stock 600 right now thank you so much Bloomberg's Lisa Pham there with all the stocks to watch and Caroline I promised we'd give you a print on the DAX it's mm. gotten going now that's also in the red along with other regional equity benchmarks in Europe the DAX lower by a quarter of a percentage point so seeing a little bit of a fade in the risk rally yesterday which was driven by news that the US and China have agreed on rolling back tariffs that that will be a key part of any agreement China's Ministry of Commerce spokesman Gao Feng made the announcement early Thursday in the past two weeks, the leaders of the two sides have conducted serious and constructive discussions on properly addressing their core concerns and agreed to a phased cancellation of tariff increases depending on the progress of negotiations. And White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow later confirmed the advance in negotiations, but some mixed messaging from the White House as trade advisor Peter Navarro told Fox Business there's no agreement at this time to remove any of the existing tariffs as a condition of the phase one deal. The talks are ongoing and a time or place for any signing of a pact is yet to be determined. Uh, meanwhile, we had some data out this morning. China's exports declined less than expected in October. Bloomberg's Brian Curtis has more now from Hong Kong. Exports fell 0.9% from a year earlier, better than the estimate of minus 3.9%. Imports down 6.4%. That was also better than estimated. It leaves a trade surplus of $42.81 billion for the month. The improvement may be down to optimism over a partial trade deal with the U.S. It'll provide some relief to companies squeezed by falling profits and weak global demand. Falling imports indicate domestic demand is still muted. In Hong Kong, Brian Curtis Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And staying with trade but moving to Europe, European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker told a German newspaper the U.S. won't impose tariffs on EU cars next week. He says that President Trump won't follow through on his threat. If the U.S. does impose the duties, Brussels has threatened to retaliate with tariffs on $39 billion of U.S. goods. Trump will ruffle a bit, but there will not be any automobile tariffs, he said, adding, you're, taking, you're talking to a fully informed man. Uh, and when it comes to top corporate news this morning, an earnings bill from the Walt Disney Company as it reached an agreement to put its new streaming service on Amazon, Samsung and LG devices. More on those results from Bloomberg's Charlie Pellet. It ensures the entertainment giant will have access to tens of millions of online viewers when it launches Disney Plus next week. Word came after Disney reported better than expected fourth quarter results. The company's theme parks and consumer product division also registered a gain in profit, bolstered by sales of merchandise tied to its hit movie Movies improved results at the Disneyland Resort in Southern California and the Disney Vacation Club. Profit of the company's ESPN network fell due to rising sports programming costs and shrinking cable subscribers. Earnings at the ABC Broadcast Network also dropped, with fewer TV shows being sold to third parties. In New York, Charlie Pellet, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Saudi Arabia is tapping some of its wealthiest citizens to buy stock in Aramco's public offering. We've learned some of the people approached were detained in Riyadh's Ritz-Carlton Hotel during the controversial corruption crackdown. For example, Prince Alwaleed bin Talal has held talks about buying a significant amount of Aramco shares, according to people with knowledge of the matter. And then Credit Agricole has reported record inflows at its asset management unit and higher revenue at the investment bank. This, uh, the first quarter since the chief executive of Officer Philippe Rassac unveiled his new targets. The French lender saw revenue in the three months through September rise by 4.8% from a year earlier and net income jumped by 8.9%. Uh, but that not being very well received by investors, we're down 2.5% uh, on Credit Agricole shares. What's also not being well received is what we heard from Richemont Caroline uh, mm. falling after the first half operating profit miss and the fact it talked about Hong Kong sales dropping and signals as well from Richemont that the Tiffany bid 
it could be unlikely uh, with the earnings disappointing. So Richemont shares right now down 5%. OK, let's get all the latest now in Global News headlines. With Kim Bates, Leanne Gerrans, good morning. Good morning, Caroline. Let's start here in the UK. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is announcing plans for special visas for doctors and nurses. The new system would be introduced after the UK leaves the EU. Healthcare is set to be a key battleground in the selection campaign. Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn has repeatedly accused Johnson of trying to sell out the NHS as part of a post-Brexit trade deal. Meanwhile, Facebook is defending its policy of not fact-checking political advertising in the UK general election. The Czech giant says it wasn't a matter for a private company to police political speech. Separately, COO Cheryl Sandberg said the US election is the firm's highest priority. We think the 2020 election is a massive test for us. And it should be. You know, elections have changed. We've changed as a company. If you look back to 2016, of course we were prepared for state actors. But what they really did was hack in and take information. This new, more insidious, right, false stuff. We were totally unprepared. We never thought of it. We missed it. Everyone missed it. Spaniards go to the polls for the fourth time in as many a months on Sunday. They are hoping that this time the election breaks a parliamentary deadlock that has prevented the formation of a majority government since 2015. Bloomberg's Charlie Deverick's reports. The socialists, who won the most votes at the last election in April, but subsequently failed to negotiate support from other parties to form a government, are once again the front runners. Right-wing parties still lag behind, but look set to narrow the gap, bolstered by perceptions of the socialist interim government's handling of violent pro-independence protests in Catalonia. In Madrid, this is Charlie Deverex for Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And French President Emmanuel Macron has attacked NATO, saying it is effectively brain dead. He wants Europe to create its own military group rather than rely on the increasingly withdrawn US and the creaking transatlantic alliance. In response, German Chancellor Angela Merkel described NATO as irreplaceable. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Jan Gerens. This is Bloomberg Neira. Leanne, thank you so much. Now with the morning sport, here's George Alderman. It was a great night for British sides in the Europa League. Manchester United beat Partizan Belgrade 3-0 at Old Trafford, while Celtic secured a dramatic 2-1 win over Lazio in Rome as both sides progressed to the last 32. United manager Oli Gunnar Solskjaer says it was just the performance he wanted to see from his side after naming a strong team. This is a little bit of a template on how we want to play, definitely. But of course it's the opposition that allow you to play this way as well. No disrespect to Partizan. But they gave us spaces. Rangers remain on track for a place in the knockout stages after getting past Porto 2-0 at Ibrox. Manager Stephen Gerrard's been asked where the result ranks during his time in charge in Glasgow. I think right up there with the best. You know, I'm sure people will try and find out, find problems with Porto and the reason why they're not what he was and blah, blah, blah. But they're a good team. They've got good players. So... I think my players deserve a lot of credit. Wolves are also looking good to get out of their group following their 1-0 victory over Slovan Bratislava. So that was your European sports roundup. Well, still ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. So the US and China say that they'll remove tariffs as a trade deal approaches both sides, saying the negotiations are making progress. We're going to go live to Hong Kong to discuss that next. This is Bloomberg. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then go to Babbel.com, download the app, and try it for free. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language, uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just go to Babbel.com and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or go to Babbel.com and try it for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L 
www.thepowerofpowerbusiness.com. Today, nearly all business is international business. The same goes for business disputes. That's why the International Center for Dispute Resolution provides a faster, more efficient approach to dispute resolution across borders. Backed by the American Arbitration Association, the ICDR is the world's leading provider of dispute resolution services. Find out why global expertise matters. Visit icdr.org. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Anna Edwards. Adidas, uh, the company reporting earnings that beat estimates. The sportswear maker's sales picked up in the U.S. after months of supply chain issues. Europe also seems more promising as sales uh, returned to growth. Joining us now is Casper Rorsted, the CEO of Adidas. Let me ask you about the North American business then. You do seem to be reporting some momentum, some real momentum coming through in North America. So do you finally put behind you the issues of the supply chain? There. As you saw, we grew double digit in the U.S. and online in China, and U.S. is indeed accelerating. And that is indi- indicative of the fact that uh, our supply chain issues are coming to the end, and that's why we expect a substantial increase in our growth also in the fourth quarter. So overall, we grew probably at two and a half times the market rate in the U.S., and we were very happy with the performance, not only in the U.S. in the third quarter, but overall. Are you still having to fly apparel from Asia into North America, and what kind of impact can we still see from the supply chain issues in this set of numbers? So in this set of numbers, you can see a slight impact in the gross margin. You can see a very little impact on the growth rate, and in the fourth quarter, as I said, you will not see any growth, you know, impact on the growth rate. On the contrary, what you're going to start seeing in the fourth quarter is the first indications of the Euro 2020, you know, the European Championship in football, that of course we look very much forward to and hope that one of our teams will win. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg's European headquarters in London, I'm Sandra Kilhoff. Time for a Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. Now over to the fast word breaking news desk in Berlin. For today's morning call, here's Richard Jones. Good morning, Sandra. We've had a mixed session for equities in Asia, with the Shanghai Comp and Hang Seng down five tenths and seven tenths of one percent, respectively. In contrast, the Nikkei 225 closed higher by a quarter of one percent. U.S. equity futures drift lower, with the E-mini S&P and Nasdaq futures both down by about one tenth. European equities have opened softer this morning, with the Eurostoxx 50, DAX, CAC 40, and FTSE 100 all trading about three to four tenths lower. Looking at the sector breakdown in Europe, losses are being led by basic resources, banks, and insurance. Turning to the bond markets, the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield is two basis points lower at one spot 9% after trading as high as one spot 9.7% yesterday. The 10-year German Bund yield is three basis points lower at minus zero spot 2.6%. And in the FX space, the Bloomberg dollar index is little changed. In terms of data, we had better than expected trade and current account surpluses from Germany. We also had France industrial production weaker than expected, while manufacturing was stronger than consensus. That's it for me. For more macro breaking news, it's SQUA Go on the Bloomberg Terminal. Sandra? Thanks, Richard. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Garrens with more on what's going on around the world. Sandra, thank you. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg is once again considering a run for president in 2020 with an advisor saying he's concerned the current Democratic contenders will not defeat President Trump. Bloomberg has not made a final decision on whether to run but has filed to get in on the ballot in Alabama's presidential primary which has an early filing deadline. Michael Bloomberg is founder and majority owner of Bloomberg LP, the parent of Bloomberg Radio. Nine 
suspects have been detained in Vietnam in connection with the Essex lorry trailer deaths. They're being questioned about illegal immigration after the discovery of 39 bodies on an industrial state in Grays last month. Authorities in Hanoi have confirmed the victims came from six areas of Vietnam. And three severe flood warnings which carry a risk to life have been triggered in South Yorkshire after torrential rain forced people to leave their homes. The heavy rains causing travel disruption. Some roads and railway lines have been closed. Parts of the Midlands have also been affected by heavy rain, which is forecast to clear and move southeast by lunchtime. Global News 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Jan Gerens. This is Bloomberg Naira. Leanne, thank you so much. Let's get back to our top story then and talk of a tariff rollback. Both China and the US have agreed to reduce levies on each other's goods. It would happen in phases as both sides work towards a deal. However, whether they're any closer to a deal is open to question. White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow confirmed a rollback to Bloomberg but said it would happen, quote, if there's a phase one trade deal. For more, let's go live to Hong Kong where Bloomberg Asia government managing editor Dan Tenkate is standing by. Dan, really great to have you with us. How much weight should be should we put to all these different comments before we've actually heard from the president himself well it's a very good question um you know uh, the president uh, over the past uh, year uh, since this started has really blown up the talk several times so un- until something is signed on the dotted line it's really hard to say um, anything is concluded um, we, you know we've seen these things fall apart you know as recently as June July when um, Trump met Xi Jinping at the G20 uh, they had a mini truce that fell apart within a matter of weeks so that's always a risk uh, until they actually go there and mm-hmm. and, and, f- and sign this thing it does, though, feel like the balance of power possibly has tipped in favour of China, doesn't it? Uh, th- this idea, I mean, th- their red line effectively is uh, a tariff rollback or secession uh, of the tariff imposition. Uh, and that does now seem to be, um, you know, included in getting the deal done. Whilst on the US side, it's President Trump's re-election bid in 2020 that sort of seems to be edging ahead in terms of the thinking. Is that, do you think that's about right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the 2020 election is certainly, you know, what Trump has his eye on right now, and he needs, uh, you know, big purchases of agricultural goods that will put a lot of money into the hands of farmers um, in swing states. Uh, Xi Jinping doesn't have those constraints, so he's able to, you know, they just have a longer time frame on that sense, and they can they can essentially wait Trump out. Uh, so if Trump does want this deal, he's going to have to uh, push it through. It's a, you know, it's a risky game uh, either way um but knowing the president he'll you know he'll view this as something you know a a risk he's willing Mm. to take uh but yeah china is certainly aware of that leverage dan we saw big moves in markets risk assets rallying global sell-off in bonds yesterday on you could argue not a whole lot so i'm wondering how important will it be both for economies regionally in asia but also for markets for there to be actual real detail in the phase one deal or will some sort of phase one deal whatever it says be okay uh, even if we don't have any indication on how fast the tariffs might be rolled back i know there's a lot of caveats and mites there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's a, it, it is a real big question i mean it's very vague right now i you know a lot of people just assume it'll contain a lot of agricultural purchases and um you know the the i think the general sentiment is that okay we're putting a stop to the escalation of the trade war um you know this is basically as bad as it gets and then we can move on to trying to solve these uh, deeper problems uh, more structural problems in phase two so i think that would be very useful I think there is a concern among other countries that, you know, that if China starts buying all these things from the U.S., that other countries will be left out of that and they Mm -hmm. could actually end up hurt by it. Um, So, uh, you know, countries are very, very keen on seeing the details and making sure that any agreement between the U.S. and China doesn't end up hurting third countries. And we're we're only going to know that once we see, uh, you know, what they actually sign. Mm, I'm left wondering, I don't know about you, what was the whole point of this exercise then? If we actually get a rollback of tariffs, a quick ramp up, a quick ramp down, a lot of pain, but what was the point of it? 
I think a lot of people will be asking that question. I think, you know, particularly if it doesn't lead to any uh, big structural changes. Um, you know, we've heard it both ways. We've heard it from business in, in Beijing. You know, they're very frustrated with the Chinese government. Um, they have promise fatigue. You know, China's always promising it's going to do this and that. It's going to open this sector and it's going to, you know, cr- clamp down on intellectual property stuff and force technology transfer. Um, so there's a big frustration among business. Uh, the question is, you know, the, the tariffs and the uncertainty and everything else was it all worth it at the end of the day you know is the cost of mm. of the trade war more than like you know just carrying on with business and having a bit of certainty so yeah that is a that question will remain Bloomberg Asia Government Managing Editor Dan Ten Kate, thank you so much for joining us from Hong Kong. And we are 25 minutes into the equity market open in Europe. Bit of softness in European stocks. This is Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. Wall Street heads into its final session of the week with the major averages at or near all-time highs. Hopes for a trade truce between the U.S. and China are providing support. Both sides said yesterday they've agreed to a step-by-step tariff rollback on each other's goods as they work toward a trade agreement. The Dow gained 182 points yesterday. The S&P 500 rose 8 and has that composite added 24. The New York Knicks and Rangers may still play at Madison Square Garden, but the teams and the famed arena will soon be owned by separate companies. The board of Madison Square Garden Company yesterday approved a plan to spin off its sports businesses as a separate company. MSG reports its quarterly earnings today. Vapors will have fewer flavors to choose from. Jewel Labs, the nation's largest maker of e-cigarettes, is dropping its mint-flavored nicotine products. Only its tobacco and menthol flavors remain. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. Are you interested in a challenging and exciting career? One where you can be part of solving complex challenges across industries and geographies? Bloomberg's ever-expanding technology, data, news, and media services foster innovation, empower clients, and offer nearly limitless opportunities for career growth. Visit Bloomberg.com slash careers today to view our current job opportunities. Bloomberg LP is an equal opportunity employer. The address once again is Bloomberg.com slash careers. Something remarkable happens when just the right elements come together. Ideas with technology. Data with inspiration. Investors with solutions. This is what Invesco does every day. Because they believe the possibilities of life and investing are greater when we come together. Invesco. Let's invest in greater possibilities together. To learn more, visit Invesco.com slash together. Invesco Distributors Incorporated. Why has J.D. Power... Just because you travel doesn't mean you can't keep your routine. The more obstacles travel puts between us and our well-being, the more we strive to work well. At Westin Hotels and Resorts, we're focused on empowering your well-being. With Westin Meetings, you work and feel your best with nutritious snacks and nourishing smoothies that give you the energy you need to power through any meeting. Don't leave your well-being behind. We give you the choice to get up or to rise. Search Westin online to find out more. Westin, let's rise. It's another Friday morning. Yet another chilly day. So ditch the British winter and chase the sun across the globe with British Airways from London Gatwick to see spectacular coral reefs and white sand beaches. Fly from London Gatwick to Mauritius with British Airways with flights and seven nights hotel from just £949 per person. Don't miss out. Book by November the 12th at ba.com slash winter sun with British Airways. Incredible is within reach. Booking fees and conditions may apply. Limited availability selected flights in March. Whatever job you're searching for, you can find it on LinkedIn. First jobs, flexible jobs, work from home on a Friday jobs, advertising jobs, accounting jobs, HR, PR, even ER jobs, Soho jobs, Shoreditch jobs, keep me away from the central line jobs, banking jobs, building jobs, never ever boring jobs, small jobs, big jobs, lunch in borough market jobs, or even voiceover jobs, which is how I ended up recording this ad. Search millions of jobs on LinkedIn and find one meant for you. They don't chant your name when you give blood or sing songs about you. But patients and their families will remember you forever because your blood can change their lives. 
We need more blood donors in Tooting, the West End and Edgware. Bleed for London. Join us today at blood.co.uk. I'm Jamie Theakston and I've teamed up with TSB to share some incredible stories of people helping people up and down the country. It's called TSB Local Pride. Let me introduce you to Ali. Ali, tell me about the Kelso Skate Park. I'm responsible for a community group where we built the first concrete skate park in the Scottish Borders. There's a huge audience for this. It was helping the young people mix with the old and it was just amazing. The skate park itself for many people was an idea. I always was confident I would get it done. People came at my aid every step of the way. Like it, the keyword is community I would never have completed this project without the people around me the area will have feel an effect a positive effect of this skate park for years to come thanks to TSB support Ali is building a workout zone to help give even more back to his local community TSB are proud to celebrate stories of people helping people and to partner Pride of Britain to find out more search TSB Local Pride Broadcasting live to London on DAB Digital Radio. To New York, Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991. To Boston, Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. 8.30 a.m. in London, 9.30 if you're listening in Paris, Frankfurt or Brussels. Good morning, everyone. I'm Naira Chehich. And I'm Caroline Hepke. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Let's get a look at the markets 30 minutes into the equity market open in Europe. The stock 600 snapping five days of gains and pulling back from a 2015 high down a quarter of a percentage point uh, as we see a little bit of a fading of the risk rally that we saw yesterday on trade talk optimism. Uh, the U.S. and China talking about potentially a phase one deal that could include tariff rollback. So many if but maybes though and we haven't heard from the president yet so if we take a look at a regional equity benchmarks we're seeing some red on the screen here as well FTSE 100 down two tenths of a percent the CAC 40 down four tenths of a percent the DAX lower by a quarter of a percentage point IBEX and FTSE MIB in the red as well another record for the S&P 500 yesterday but we're looking a little bit soft on futures right now S&P and Dow futures flat NASDAQ futures edging into the red down one tenth of a percent and the global bond sell-off yesterday saw the 10-year Treasury yield hit a three-month high. It had one of its worst days since President Trump was elected. We pull back a little down a basis point, still above 190 on the 10-year Treasury yield today, though. The 10-year bond yield, after jumping 10 basis points yesterday, is down two basis points now at negative 26. And yields sliding elsewhere in Europe as well. The 10-year gilt yield down two basis points on a 77 handle. We got a bit of a gloomy outlook from the BOE and Mark Carney. Uh, are we going to get rate cuts, though? Mark Carney certainly wouldn't commit to that in any way in the news conference. In FX, dollar-yen is flat after we did see uh, the yen pull back yesterday. It's been a bit of a painful week for havens in general. Gold heading for its worst week since 2017, trading now at $1,470 an ounce, up one-tenth of a percent. And the yuan, something to focus on as well, as it has stayed stronger beyond the seven handle, even though uh, we are seeing a little bit of weakness today, but trading at 698.54 on the offshore. Caroline. Okay, our top stories this morning. Both sides now agree the first phase of a U.S.-China trade deal would include a rollback of tariffs. That would pave the way for a de-escalation in the global trade war. The White House says that President Trump is anxious to sign a deal, but talks are still ongoing and a time or place for the signing has not been determined. In corporate news, German insurer Allianz raised its outlook for the full year. Inflows at its asset management unit helped offset lower earnings at its property and casualty business. Allianz owns bond manager PIMCO and the firm attracted $24 billion from clients in the third quarter. And Saudi Arabia is tapping some of its wealthiest citizens to buy stock in Aramco's public offering. We've learned that some of the people approached were detained in Riyadh's Ritz-Carlton Hotel during the controversial corruption crackdown. For example, ba- uh, Prince Al-Walid bin Talal has held talks about buying a, quote, significant amount of Aramco shares. That's according to people with knowledge of the matter. And the Swiss parent of Cartier reported half-year earnings that missed estimates. Richemont was hurt by a double-digit sales slump in Hong Kong. Months of protests there have battered retailers. Richemont also said that operating margins shrank. That's because investments in e-commerce are sapping profitability. And we took a check on Richemont shares earlier when they opened. Uh, we were down around about 5%. Taking a look at the shares now, we trade lower by 4.8%. And also uh, should check Allianz, uh, given that we just brought you that story too. That 
that is down 2% in this session. Uh, so let's take you to a UK story uh, in fund management. And Neil Woodford's protégé, Mark Barnett, has been hit with rating downgrades on two of his funds at Invesco. Barnett followed his mentor's lead to load up on less liquid securities, but that has prompted concerns from the ratings firm Morningstar. For more on this story, we're joined by Bloomberg's Danny Berger. Danny, uh, good to speak to you. So Neil Woodford and the story there we have followed continuously. Mark Barnett obviously worked closely with Woodford. Morningstar's justification now, they're thinking around downgrading of these two funds at Invesco? Yeah, I mean, it is all about liquidity here, as it has been for really a variety of different funds we've heard from, from GAM to H2O. So this follows along the same thread. And the thought is, is you have these daily funds, which presumably investors can move in and out of quickly. They don't have lockups that a lot of other funds have. So when you have that style of fund, and at the mm-hmm. same time, it's smaller caps, less liquid funds, the concern is, is that managers won't be able to meet investor redemptions. And this is pretty much what Morningstar said about Mark Barnett's uh, uh, Invesco funds, saying that, look, he's been able to meet redemptions so far, but his continued intent on these smaller companies, these smaller names, is what's giving them concern, especially that he's undergone this style drift, which wasn't originally, uh, actually, when Neil Woodford managed it, what it originally was targeting. Yeah, and on that point of sort of comparing um, Mark Barnett and Neil Woodford, of course, we've mentioned that Barnett was considered Neil Woodford's protege, Danny. How similar, actually, are the strategies between the two? Both certainly moved into small caps. When it comes to Neil Woodford, he was really actually known for investing in more blue chip stocks. But once he leaves Invesco, starts up his own fund, having that namesake really gave him the freedom to move into these smaller companies. And then when you look at Mark Barnett at Invesco, just the demand for returns and the high valuations of bigger stocks meant that investors perhaps were okay with investing in smaller companies if it led to returns. But the important thing to emphasize here is that Neil Woodford downfall really came when he was unable to meet redemptions. He starts to get client outflows, which Mm -hmm. means he has to put some of these companies up for sale. He puts the more liquid ones up for sale, leaving investors with just these illiquid companies. It's unclear if that's happened to Barnett because he has had a lot of redemptions. Uh, He's seen something like 1.7 billion pounds pulled from his funds so far this year. So is our investors being left with less liquid stocks? That is the concern here. Again, a similar con- concern to Woodford, but again, he has been able to meet those redemptions. So that's an important distinction. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose also important for context is that Barnett controls about a fifth of Invesco's UK uh, business. So uh, that's uh, £43 billion, the total assets for, for Invesco here in the UK. But then, look, let's broaden things out and talk more about, because it's the liquidity issue that the regulators regulators are, have really been focused on. Is it such a huge concern for European managers, you know, this year, right now? Yeah. One reason it's very much so a European specific story, I mean, just look at yields. Yeah. Investors want yields. Managers obviously want to give their clients that. And when you have years of quantitative easing, zero to negative interest rates, you have all of these investment firms venturing out into harder to sell assets, sell assets, real estate, uh, almost more of a venture capital sort of model mindset. Uh, And these safe assets also have plummeted uh, since the financial crisis. So investors moving up the risk curve. Again, we've seen it. Tim Haywood, GAM, H2O. Um, And so this is really top of mind, especially as it looks like the cycle is nearly turning. Thanks so much. Bloomberg's Danny Berger, our markets reporter. Great work on that story. So let's get over now to Bloomberg's Leanne Gerrans, who has all the latest in global news. Good morning. Good morning, Caroline. Let's start here in the UK. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is announcing plans for special visas for doctors and nurses. The new system would be introduced after the UK leaves the EU. Healthcare is set to be a key battleground in the election campaign. Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn has repeatedly accused Johnson of trying to sell out the NHS as part of post-Brexit trade deals. Staying in Europe, French President Emmanuel Macron has attacked NATO, saying it's effectively brain dead. He wants Europe to create its own military group rather than rely on the increasingly withdrawn US and the creaking transatlantic alliance. In response, German Chancellor Merkel described NATO as irreplaceable. The French president chose drastic words. That is not my view of cooperation in NATO. And I think that's such a sweeping blow. It is not necessary, even if we do have problems, even if we must pull ourselves together. 
In Hong Kong, a student who fell at a car park near clashes on Monday has now died. Bloomberg's Ian Marlowe says this development is already prompting more demonstrations in the Asian financial hub. Chao Tzu Lok suffered a brain injury after falling early Monday as police carried out a dispersal operation nearby using tear gas. A spokesman for the hospital authority confirmed on Friday that he was certified dead shortly after 8 a.m. Hong Kong's government said it was deeply saddened and offered condolences to Chao's family in a statement responding to media inquiries about his death. In Hong Kong, Ian Marlow, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And there was a clear message from the White House to Ukraine. That's according to one senior State Department official. He told House committees last month President Trump wanted Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden. He says the three words being pushed by the administration were investigations Biden and Clinton. Global News 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Naira. Leanne Thank you so much. With the morning sport, here's George Alderman. It was a great night for British sides in the Europa League. Manchester United beat Partizan Belgrade 3-0 at Old Trafford, while Celtic secured a dramatic 2-1 win over Lazio in Rome as both sides progressed to the last 32. United manager Oli Gunnar Solskjaer says it was just the performance he wanted to see from his side after naming a strong team. This is a little bit of a template on how we want to play, definitely. But of course it's the opposition that allow you to play this way as well. No disrespect to Partizan, um, but they gave us spaces. Rangers remain on track for a place in the knockout stages after getting past Porto 2-0 at Ibrox. Manager Steven Gerrard has been asked where the result ranks during his time in charge in Glasgow. I think right up there with the best. You know, I'm sure people will try and find out, find problems with Porto and the reason why they're not what he was and blah, blah, blah. But they're a good team. They've got good players. So I think my players deserve a lot of credit. Wolves are also looking good to get out of their group following their 1-0 victory over Slovan Bratislava. So that's your European sports coming up next. Even Matt Lowe-Smith from JP Morgan Asset Management. This is Bloomberg. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with this person that's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. As Ben Franklin said, taxes are one of the certainties of life. Tax reform and the Wayfair decision have brought opportunities, surprises, and challenges to corporate taxpayers. New and complex regulations such as Guilty and FDII mean intercompany transactions, transfer pricing, and business combinations need to be reevaluated. Companies also face additional state sales and income tax exposure. What worked in the past may not work today. Eisner Amper can help. That's a certainty. Visit EisnerAmper.com slash tax certainty. Rich is just a really, really, really good guy. The term good egg isn't enough to describe him. He's also certified organic and free range. Rich puts the cap back on everything. The toothpaste, the olive oil, the shampoo, everything. He lets his 10-year-old nephew beat him at virtual tennis, even though he can straight up slay his 10-year-old nephew in virtual tennis. When the toilet paper is running low, Rich replaces the roll on the actual holder, not just on the back of the toilet. Rich is texting and driving. Rich, no. What are you doing, Rich? I was just telling everyone how great you are. Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Asset. Whatever job you're searching for, you can find it on LinkedIn. First jobs, flexible jobs, work from home on a Friday jobs, advertising jobs, accounting jobs, HR, PR, even ER jobs, Soho jobs, Shoreditch jobs, keep me away from the central line jobs, banking jobs, building jobs, never ever boring jobs, small jobs, big jobs, lunch in borough market jobs, or even voiceover jobs, which is how I ended up recording this ad. Search millions of jobs on LinkedIn and find one meant for you.
They don't chant your name when you give blood or sing songs about you. But patients and their families will remember you forever because your blood can change their lives. We need more blood donors in Tooting, the West End and Edgware. Bleed for London. Join us today at blood.co.uk. This is the sound of Helen and Peter hiking to the fairy tale fortress high above the winter wonderland below. Or it would be if they hadn't stopped at the first beer house they came to. There it is, Helen and Peter. There's your incredible. Fly from London Gatwick to Salzburg from £29 each way. With British Airways, incredible is within reach. Terms and conditions apply. Limited availability and dates. Fair quoted is each way based on a return. CBA.com slash Gatwick for details. Spot a bargain in the Debenham Spectacular event. Up to 30% off throughout the store and up to 15% off beauty and fragrance. Shop now in store and at Debenhams.com. It's never nice missing out. But millions are doing just that by having a current account that doesn't pay them any interest on their hard-earned money. TSB is here to help. They offer interest to all their Plus Account customers for no monthly fee. So if you're one of the millions of people who are missing out, talk to TSB. Terms and conditions apply. London, switch to Vodafone, the UK's best mobile network, and V Unlimited, because the best phones deserve the best network and our new unlimited data plans. The future is exciting. Ready? Vodafone. Max download speeds apply to unlimited data. Best network as voted by readers of trusted reviews. Terms at vodafone.co.uk slash unlimited. Three is a magic number. 300 schemes to help bugs and bees Supporting environmental needs 8,000 grants for local sports and Performing arts get our support 7 millionaires every week The nation's on a winning streak 30 million pounds to good causes Every week Who the thought it? These are magic numbers Your numbers make amazing happen 25 years of the National Lottery Rules and procedures apply Players must be 16 or over Waiting for a phone that makes everything look crystal clear, like a brilliant iPhone 8 with Retina display? The wait is over. Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event is on. This week, get an iPhone 8 for just £23.49 a month, a saving of £144. Get yours by 17th of November. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Best ever Black Friday based on range of products in promotion. Was £27.49, now £23.49. 36-month credit agreement, rolling monthly usage agreement, subject to status, phase, policy applies. See tescomobile.com slash terms. This is someone making an online booking at Ford.co.uk using the words Ford 20 so they can service their Ford for £20 less. And this is someone who didn't get their Ford serviced. You see, at Ford, we use Ford Genuine Parts and Ford Trained Technicians. Plus, if you quote Ford 20 when you book with us online, you can receive £20 off. Book now at Ford.co.uk or visit your local participating dealer. Ford Service. No one knows your Ford better. Retail customers only. At participating Ford dealers. Cannot be used with other promotions. T's and C's apply. Search Ford Service for more information. Markets, headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg European headquarters in London, I'm Sandra Kilhoff with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. Now, European equity markets very much in the red. The stock 600, FTSE, DAX and CAC 40 all down four tenths of percent. U.S. equity futures also pointing lower amid signs that that risk on mood that really dominates the markets this week is starting to abate a bit. That's pushing treasuries higher. We're currently seeing the 10-year yield down two basis points at one spot 90. Meanwhile, Japan's benchmark yield inching towards zero. 10-year JGB is actually on track for their biggest weekly climb since May 2013. Currently only five basis points into negative territory. 10-year bond yields, meanwhile, down two basis points at negative 26. 10-year guilt yields slipping two basis points as well to 78 basis points. Not a lot of action in currencies this morning. The Bloomberg Dollar Spot Index up one-tenth of a percent. The yen, however, flat at 109 spot three against the greenback cable holding at one spot 28. In commodities, we're seeing gold set for its worst week since 2017. Traders really unwind 
binding recessionary pricing currently at $1,470 a troy ounce. Meanwhile, WTI slipping more than a percent, but still well above $56 a barrel. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now, here's Leanne Garrens with more on what's going on around the world. Sandra, thank you. Three severe flood warnings which carry a risk to life have been triggered in South Yorkshire after torrential rain forced people to leave their homes. The heavy rains causing travel disruption. Some roads and railway lines have been closed. Parts of the Midlands have also been affected by heavy rain which is forecast to clear and move southeast by lunchtime. Brazil's top court has ruled that convicted criminals should be jailed only after all their appeals are exhausted. This move may allow high-profile prisoners, including former President Lula da Silva, to walk free. Lula led the South American country between 2003 and 2010, but was jailed last year. And French President Emmanuel Macron has attacked a NATO, saying it is effectively brain dead. He wants Europe to create its own military group rather than rely on the increasingly withdrawn US and the creaking transatlantic alliance. In response, German Chancellor Angela Merkel described NATO as irreplaceable. Global News 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Naira. Leanne, thank you so much. Now let's get back to our top story and also our guest in studio. We're joined by Stephen Macklow Smith, JP Morgan Asset Management, International Equity Group Market Strategist. Stephen, great to have you with us. Morning. So we saw the SP 500 hit another record yesterday on this optimism that maybe we'll see a rollback of tariffs uh, in a phase one deal uh, between the US and China if that deal comes. A lot of global equity indices in overbought territory. Robert Burgess on the Bloomberg says that if a detente is at hand, we can come back to if that is at hand, investors have to confront two critical questions they've ignored so far. One is the Fed on pause and two is whether companies can meet the lofty earnings estimates for next year. Is that where equity investors should be sitting right now and the questions they should be asking themselves? Yes, absolutely. I think those two questions are extremely important. Partly because if you just look at consensus for next year's earnings, um, the, the expectation is that both Europe and the US will grow earnings by 10%. But that's against the background of, of nominal GDP growth, which mm. was pedestrian. And we had the European Commission yesterday, which downgraded its forecast for European GDP. Um, so most uh, economies, developed market economies around the world next year will struggle to grow at trends. So the notion that earnings can grow at 10%, I'm not saying it's impossible, uh, but it does look a bit of a stretch. So uh, we've been looking in this third quarter earnings season for any sign that, that, that companies are starting to reduce their guidance for next year and just guide analysts gently lower. And actually, there's very little sign of that. So in the short term, um, I think that the short cycle, which is uh, you know, credit and uh, the relationship between inventories and, and new orders, those are all looking a little bit better. If if you get some momentum on that because the trade question has dissipated, then it's possible that next year you could get uh, some, some slightly better momentum and forecasts could exceed estimates. Mm. It's still such a great deal of uncertainty, though, around the US-China uh, trade negotiation, the phase one agreement. Yes, the two sides seem to have agreed to, to this idea of rolling back tariffs if there's a phase one agreement. Um, but still, the European Union uh, could still be in the eye of the storm with the tariffs on car exports. I mean, Jean-Claude Juncker says he's a man in the know and he doesn't think it's going to happen. Are you on the same side as, as him? <laughs> well, he has access to information that I don't see, sure. having met President Trump in the, in the White House one-to-one -one, um, a, a few months ago. Um, my sense is that the, 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 the issue is not necessarily whether uh, trade goes ahead, it's the, it's the uh, trade tensions remain, it's the impact that it has on corporate confidence. Mm -hmm. We've seen a, a reduction in corporate confidence in the manufacturing sector, particularly services so far fairly much under affected, um, but manufacturing clearly under pressure. And the issue there is that if companies aren't confident, they're not, they're not going to commit capital to investment in, in, in productive assets. So the, um, the, the dearth of productivity growth that has bedeviled the global economy since the global financial crisis just remains with us. And while in the short term, companies are being penalized for announcing higher capital investment uh, plans. In the medium term, you do actually need some capex in order to drive some productivity growth, which then feeds through to, to profitability and margins. So, you know, I wouldn't stand out against animal spirits in the short term, and I think that it's interesting that, that despite the fact that equities, which are a high volatility asset class, are just coming back at the moment, you're still seeing yield curves, broadly speaking, steepening. So it seems to me that bond markets are discounting a higher level of, of, of growth over the next three to six months. Um, mm. Notwithstanding that, you know, I think that, that if you have uh, the, the continued 
improvement in uh, just the short cycle, as I said, then actually there is scope for risk assets to move higher. What you were saying, though, about companies um, being punished for higher uh, capex at the moment, is that also a sort of symptom of a market, an equity market, that right now is less driven by the fundamentals of individual corporates and is really just moving on sentiment? I think you're right, Nara. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, been, it's been a tough two years because so much of, of the, uh, the movement within equity classes has actually been driven by macro factors yep. rather than, than micro factors. And so, uh, you know, stock selection in, in, in that environment is always a, a bit of a challenge. And, you know, the sooner we can get back to stock selection and stocks driven on their own fundamentals, um, the better. Um, this point about about companies and, and what they're doing with their, with their cash flow, um, I guess, you know, if you, if, you, if you just think about companies that aren't growing earnings but are paying a reliable dividend and, and generating plenty of free cash, then you could value those like a corporate bond. And actually, corporate bonds are pretty richly valued, so that could drive the valuation up. But in the medium, term, you do need that, that, that growth in earnings to come through. Mm, what about um, our MLive question of the day this morning? How much higher yields uh, can stocks actually withstand? I mean, that's obviously crucial given the moves that we had yesterday, quite dramatic three-month high for uh, 197 for US benchmark yields. And then German yields also <laughs> up 10 basis points yesterday. So, how, what's the read across there into, into corporate? I, th- I think it's exactly the right question to be asking. If we think about, about sovereign um, bonds, most people regard those as a risk-free asset, um, although the Germans don't seem to regard Italian bonds as a risk free asset. And that's the, 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 the debate that's happening at the banking union today. But um, in order for a risk free asset to be attractive as a, as a safe haven, really you need a, a, a positive real return. And of course with bond deals where, we, where they are, you're not getting that. So there is actually a, you know, it's a paradox for investors that if they want to retreat from the volatility of higher risk assets, they have to accept and swallow a negative real return over a shorter term period in the hope that they can then step back in and buy higher volatility the assets when they're corrected. If you had a situation in which bond yields correct and are giving you a positive real return, then actually um, their, their attractions as a safe haven would, would, probably, would probably increase. Um, and so I think that the debate between the attractiveness of equities on valuation of bonds at a point when bonds have a positive real return becomes much more nuanced so that you, know, you do have a real alternative there. Yes, um, and also it's interesting if you take into account the bond auctions, the treasury auctions we've had this week, which have uh, been fairly strong, which does really show you that kind of underlying demand for, for bonds. And so many people saying that 2% is a level on the 10-year treasury yield where the dip buyers start coming back in. So the sell-off that we saw yesterday, it's one day are we actually just on a lower trajectory for bond yields? It's, it's very difficult to say because it, it depends slightly where, where growth gets to. So if you have a ratcheting down of trade tensions, um, a, a, a boosting of, of, of corporate confidence, um, as I say, you know, on the services side, employment is fine, real income growth is fine, governments are still spending money, tax receipts are fine. Um, you know, growth could actually surprise positively in that mm. environment if companies come to the party and, and start to invest um, and, and start to hire people. Um, but, you know, it's it's, it's very, very difficult to make that prediction with it with 100% certainty when, um, as we know, uh, trade negotiations can go wrong in, in very, very short order. Mm. Yeah, and in myriad ways. Uh, right, the European Commission, you mentioned it, cut, cut uh, the growth forecast for the Eurozone to 1.1%. Um, obviously, now as we're coming to the end or you know, most of the way through uh, the European earnings uh, uh, cycle, a reporting cycle, which areas would you pick in particular as being you're possibly optimistic offering opportunities here in Europe. You know, it's been such an unloved part of the market. Well, if the, if, if the short cycle continues to turn up and you have a strengthening of, of industrial behaviour, then I think, and, and if that is um, accompanied by a steepening in yield curves, and I think it's possible that financials and cyclicals can mm-hmm. continue to do well. Um, but in the medium term, I think that um, if we think about European growth, there's a broader question, which is that demographics in Europe obviously is a challenge. Um, when you model these things forward on the supply side, which we do for our long-term capital market assumptions, which has just been published, um, we find it very difficult to see um, an elevated level of growth for the Eurozone. We think that, that trend growth is sort of one and a quarter, one and a half percent. The potential positive surprise comes if productivity lifts dramatically from here, because for a lower growth economy like the Eurozone or Japan, a pickup in productivity ahead of expectations actually adds, you know, it's, mm. it's incrementally a much greater positive. 
Yeah, and you know what, Stephen, I spoke to Joe Kayser, the Siemens CEO, yesterday. Uh, Siemens seeing a decline in market volume for short-cycle businesses, but he told me they expect the short cycle to level out in six months. Stephen Macklow-Smith, great to have you with us. J.P. Morgan Asset Management International Equity Group Market Strategist. Yeah, it seems demographics and climate change are the buzzwords, aren't they, right now for the markets? Thank you so much for joining us. Now, coming up next, Anna Edwards and Matt Miller are back here on Bloomberg Daybreak. You're speaking to Christine Keller. This is Bloomberg. With them offers an elite team of... Se- we just got back from a beautiful city break in Bath. Midweek is the perfect time to beat the crowds. Just an hour and a half by train from London. It was so relaxing. We headed straight for Bath Christmas Market. Oh, I can still smell the roasted chestnuts and mulled wine from the chalets. Then it was time for glow-in-the-dark mini golf. I got a hole in one. Well, three. I'm a bit rusty, okay? There's so much to do in Bath. I'm already planning my next trip. Discover the magic of Bath this Christmas. Plan ahead at visitbath.co.uk slash Christmas. I can find and fund my car From a Mini to a Jaguar Feel good car buying from findandfundmycar.com is the place where you can find quality used cars from trusted dealers rated by you and where you can fund your car with finance to fit your budget. It's feel good car buying all in one place. Bloomberg.com on the Bloomberg Business app and at TikTok on Twitter. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. What we're now seeing for the first time is this facade of absolute unity beginning to break down in the EU. We expect that there will be some type of slowdown recession beyond 2019. The European banking system, although recovering, hasn't recovered, and there are areas of fragility. We've seen this before, trade talks that lead nowhere and then tariffs. We just swing from one to the other and markets get caught in the middle. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe with Anna Edwards and Matt Miller on Bloomberg Radio. Good morning from London. I'm Anna Edwards. Matt Miller joining us very shortly. He's in Berlin. You're listening to Daybreak Europe live on London DAB Digital Radio. We check the markets for you every 15 minutes here on Bloomberg Radio, so let's do that. Let's get to the uh, sell-off that we're seeing on European equity markets. Uh, we're down by four-tenths of one percent on the stock 600. The FTSE 100, the CAC 40, the Cetradax, all down by around the similar margin, around four-tenths of a percent. Uh, US futures point downwards. Uh, they've been moving around. A little bit of volatility in the last couple of hours or so, but they point down by between one and two tenths of a percent right now. The session in Asia was marked by a little bit of weakness. Was it just a pause for thought after the gains that we've seen this week? The Nikkei and the Japanese markets more generally, the only really green spots for the Asian equity session. Elsewhere, we did see some moves to the downside. We have had a really risk on week, though, so perhaps a little pause for thought here as we digest fact from expectation and hope, really, on the trade narrative. The US and China talking about rollback of tariffs if they get to a phase one deal signing, and that's perhaps a big if. We've been here before. The markets remain a little bit sceptical, perhaps. So we keep an eye on the risk on, risk off narrative in that regard. Oil prices a little bit weaker this morning, down by 1.2% on WTI, but the trend for the week has been an upward one. We have seen commodities joining in, in general, with that risk on rally. We've seen havens generally being sold off, so gold and Treasuries, uh, to some extent, uh, setting the course there. Iron ore, interesting to watch the moves there. We've seen some weakness on iron ore this morning as well. E- uh, City talking about how they see lower prices coming through for that metal. But generally speaking, the narrative of the week has been a risk on one based around higher expectations for a trade deal, even if it is just a phase one trade deal. Uh, so let's get further into that conversation. Do we have Matt Miller with us? Yes, we do, Matt. Let's, I'm uh, here. Let's do that. You know, I, I, I noticed a few things. First of all, um, I was pretty surprised to see bonds, well, treasuries yielding more than 1.95, I think 1.96% yesterday. And then uh, gold dropping to 14.70, so a $30 drop in one day um, was pretty incredible. Um, and I, I, my question is, how, how much further do we have to go? Can we get to 2%? Um, and does gold drop much further? Or... Does, you know, do we see this sort of one step forward, two steps back pattern repeat itself between the U.S. and Chinese? Because we've seen so many times uh, markets get optimistic and then one tweet, mm. you know, um, will will bring it all crashing down and everybody runs for the yen and treasuries. You yeah. can buy now more than 109 yen for the dollar and you have been for uh, able to for a couple of days. And we've so. had a distinct lack of tweets, actually, haven't we, from the president on this subject this week, which is also a reason why 
why uh, some remain sceptical. Let's get into this conversation then with a couple of market voices here at Bloomberg. Uh, we've got uh, Danny Berger with us from uh, our Bloomberg TV team and Bloomberg Opinion columnist Marcus Ashworth. Uh, Danny, let's come to you first then. I mean, we, we, how do you characterise what we're seeing in the Havens trade at the moment? Because we'd seen a, a lot of appetite for Havens in the context of the global trade tensions. And now a lot of that seems to be abating. Yeah, so uh, the way that I kind of look at this isn't so much that investors hate havens, they don't want gold, they don't want treasuries. The way I think it makes more sense to frame this is just that haven prices had been so rich. You look at gold trading near $1,500 per ounce, treasury yields uh, starting to come back up, but still relatively low. It seems like a lot of these assets were really pricing in the worst case scenario, pricing in a recession, pricing in trade concerns. So when you have any bit of movement away from this narrative, when you have the idea that the U.S. and China look closer to reaching a deal, rolling back tariffs, preliminary though it may be, you see investors start to reduce some of those bets. And again, I think that really just speaks to how much recession and how much fear is priced in to these assets. They're still certainly rich in terms of valuations. So I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see this volatility and continue to see havens hurt anytime we get some progress be it trade or economic data marcus uh, is the, the one thing i wonder is how do you value gold i mean what what does a rich gold valuation look like um since there's no returns and i don't know uh price to book i i can't imagine <laughs> what what an overvalued piece of think, gold like how do you what's that i think you're answering point? your own question here matt no yeah. one really cares uh, <laughs> uh, so at least of all me i mean really gold is is an asset which comes into vogue from time to time and uh look it's there but you know the reality what we're seeing here far more importantly i think is a rotation out of very lazy easy trades that people have had coming up towards the end of the year and they've been shaken um, out of their stupor into thinking, okay, how am I going to batten down the hatches, put away 2019 to bed. Uh, we've had a big move this week uh, into, obviously, the 30-year U.S. Treasury auction last night, which was a classic opportunity where you buy, uh, because it's the, the, the point of, of, of everyone's pushing down as, all the dealers as low as can get. Then, you know, you, you buy it back. I think we're going to have a bit of correction today um, after, a, after a big move this week. Um, what's been interesting to me is the bond markets across the globe have all moved in lockstep with each other. There hasn't been that much um, volatility between sovereigns and even really among uh, the curve moves have been quite smooth. This has been a big, steady uh, wave, should we say, rather than a, 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 a crash event or, or any form of uh, it really sort of spiky volatility between assets classes. But it is important. Yeah, and how much further, how much higher do you think that U.S. yields go then from here, Marcus? We're looking at the U.S. 10-year at 1.9%. It was down at, what, 1.5% in August, September time. Is all of this because of the the pause from the Fed? Well, sorry, from, from, is it all because of the cutting that we'd seen from the Fed and then the pause? I mean, what's the, what's the narrative that explains this and tells us whether we go further up in yields? Well, I think, we, well, I think the market's having to price in the fact that the Fed is not going anywhere for the foreseeable future and when we get to December they all look again at it uh, but for, for now uh, the barrier to a hike is clearly higher than a, than a barrier to a cut but still both are, are, are pretty high in that sense and therefore the Fed is, is less in play perhaps than maybe it was um, you know, I think Danny got it exactly right. I mean, that all the easy sort of, uh, oh my, well, the world's coming to an end. The recession's going to happen. Uh, trade's disastrous. Uh, Brexit's going to ruin this, that, and the other. They're, they've all sort of played out, and now the markets are just unwinding. What was a probably too big a move? The pendulum swung too far one way. Uh, personally, I'm not too bearish. Just very short term here on, on bonds. I think they'll they'll recover back some, but uh, I think equities are. Are probably going to outperform uh, into the balance at the end, end of the year. I mean, I'm not trying to be so simplistic and say a Santa rally, but I think for the moment they have a little bit more attractiveness than uh, perhaps they. Well, realize. thank goodness the world isn't going to end. I mean, I was already starting to prepare my um, Alaskan <laughs> pickup truck have shotgun. Packs your tins. Packs with gold. <laughs> yeah, uh, Danny. What what happens then if we if we're not going to go off a cliff here? Um, and we're going to be able to, in a good old-fashioned European sense, stretch out Brexit for the rest of time, kind of like banking union and negative rates. Do you see people um, buying value stocks? I mean, what, what, what's, the, what's the play? 
Yeah, I mean, there certainly has been a lot of value stock buying, but but one thing that I think this kind of does, which is where you get a lot of concern in the market, is you have things continuing the way they are. Um, and exactly as Marcus was saying, some of these lazier bets don't work. So you see people moving into uh, more illiquid things. I mean, yesterday, you know, we had um, Neil Woodford's protege at Invesco getting, you know, some heat from that from Morningstar. You see people buying into value, perhaps buying some value traps. Citigroup has been pretty explicit about this, saying that, okay, investors are rotating into value, but some of these financials they're buying perhaps don't make a lot of sense. Um, you see this on the private equity side. You see investors moving increasingly into these high valuation uh, uh, private companies because they're looking for returns. And this is what happens when we have yields that continue to stay low and yield starved investors continue to move into these riskier assets, even if it means that riskier assets mean, uh, you know, looking at a Walgreens take private. I mean, I, I, I I imagine that this is the world that we're going to continue to see um, if things just keep chugging along at the pace that they're at. Okay, thanks very much uh, to both of you. Thanks to Danny Berger and also to Bloomberg Opinion Economist Marcus Ashworth. Now, let's go over to Leanne Garens and get our global news headlines. Leanne? Good morning, Matt. Let's start here in the UK. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is announcing plans for special visas for doctors and nurses. The new system would be introduced after the UK leaves the EU. Healthcare is set to be a key battleground in this election campaign. Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn has repeatedly accused Johnson of trying to sell out the NHS as part of post-Brexit trade deals. Meanwhile, Facebook is defending its policy of not fact-checking political advertising in the UK general election. The Czech giant says it wasn't a matter for a private company to please political speech. Separately, COO Cheryl Sandberg said the US election is the firm's highest priority. We think the 2020 election is a massive test for us. And it should be. You know, elections have changed. We've changed as a company. If you look back to 2016, of course we were prepared for state actors, but what they really did was hack in and take information. This new, more insidious, right, false stuff, we were totally unprepared. We never thought of it. We missed it. Everyone missed it. Spaniards go to the polls for the fourth time in as many years on Sunday. They are hoping that this time the election breaks a parliamentary deadlock that has prevented the formation of a majority government since 2015. Bloomberg's Charlie Deverick's reports. The socialists, who won the most votes at the last election in April, but subsequently failed to negotiate support from other parties to form a government, are once again the front runners. Right-wing parties still lag behind, but look set to narrow the gap, bolstered by perceptions of the socialist interim government's handling of violent pro-independence protests in Catalonia. In Madrid, this is Charlie Deverex for Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And French President Emmanuel Macron has attacked NATO, saying it's effectively brain dead. He wants Europe to create its own military group rather than rely on the increasingly withdrawn US and the creaking transatlantic alliance. In response, German Chancellor Angela Merkel described NATO as irreplaceable. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerens. This is Bloomberg. Anna. Thanks for very much for that, Leanne. Now with your morning sports news, here's George Alderman. It was a great night for British sides in the Europa League. Manchester United beat Partizan Belgrade 3-0 at Old Trafford, while Celtic secured a dramatic 2-1 win over Lazio in Rome as both sides progressed to the last 32. United manager Oli Gunnar Solskjaer says it was just the performance he wanted to see from his side after naming a strong team. This is a little bit of a template on how we want to play, definitely. But of course, it's the opposition that allow you to play this way as well. No disrespect to Partizan, um, but they gave us spaces. Rangers remain on track for a place in the knockout stages after getting past Porto 2-0 at Ibrox. Manager Steven Gerrard's been asked where the result ranks during his time in charge in Glasgow. I think right up there with the best. You know, I'm sure people will try and find out to find problems with Porto and the reason why they're not what he was and blah, blah, blah. But they're a good team. They've got good players. So I think my players deserve a lot of credit. Wolves are also looking good to get out of their group following their 1-0 victory over Slovan Bratislava. Let's get the U.S. sports now. For that, we go to Pete Fox. Pete? 
Basketball from Charlotte. The Celtics all over the Hornets, 108-87. Boston now 6-1, and one, led by Jason Tatum's 23. Kemba Walker posted 14 against his former team. On the ice, also in Carolina, Rangers take care of the Hurricanes, 4-2. Islanders fall in overtime in Brooklyn to the Pens, 4-3. And the Caps post a 5-4 win over the Panthers in Sunrise, also in overtime. Alexander Ovechkin, a 3.9, two goals and an assist. And from Thursday night football, Raiders now 5-4, and four, coming from behind to beat the Chargers on a Josh Jacobs 18-yard touchdown run, 26-24 the final. I'm Pete Fox, that's your Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Thanks very much for that, Pete. Still ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Germany, 30 years on. Saturday marks three decades since the fall of the Berlin Wall. We'll chart the country's journey through unification to Europe's biggest economy. Bloomberg Opinion coming up next. This is Bloomberg. Hey, y'all. Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know, because my grandfather was a firefighter. And one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means... Always BYOB. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So, for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Are you looking for senior care for your mom or dad but don't know where to start? Hi, I'm Joan London with The Place for Mom. Nobody knows your parent or loved one better than you, and nobody knows senior living better than the experts at A Place for Mom. It's a free service, and we've helped thousands of families find the right place for their mom or dad. There's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call today. Call a place for mom at 1-800-391-1755. That's 1-800-391-1755. If you love them enough to listen to them practice the same song on tuba, please be done. Over and over and over and over and over. Then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Sounds good, honey. Check today at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Act Council. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Taylor Riggs. What can be done to preserve utility grids from the effects of climate change? Our next guest is working on that very question. It is Ashley Philipson, and she is the project leader for Grid Resilience and Intelligence Platform, a.k.a. GRIP. So, Ashley, great to have you. And you were talking about how you were finally in year two of three of this project. Yes. Over that time period, what have been some of these major challenges that we're confronting? So, uh, unfortunately, wildfires you know, here on the West Coast have become pretty regular just like the seasons and same thing on the east coast we're having you know regular hurricanes that are you know increasing in power and we have to learn how to deal with these how can we have a more flexible adaptable grid uh, the grid infrastructure is some of the oldest legacy infrastructure uh, that we've had in the u.s and so trying to figure out ways to essentially have new tools and solutions in our toolbox uh, like ai like machine learning that can help anticipate absorb and recover from some of these grid events so walk me through some of the solutions that you found so far we're looking at things like predictive analytics. So how can we look at actually figuring out where crews should be placed in advance of a wind event? In our absorption use case, we're trying to use a, a method called virtual islanding that actually uses machine learning to figure out how can we do power balancing with water heaters, electric vehicles, uh, solar inverters. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. 
Markets, headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg's European headquarters here in London, I'm Caroline Hepke with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. So the US stock 600 right now down by half of 1%. So the FTSE 100 similarly lower. The Zetra DAX down four tenths of 1%. So European equities dropping after that five-day winning streak and the record high we saw yesterday. Uh, Richemont profits missing expectations, so their share price down by 5%. We also had a result uh, from Allianz and Credit Agricole. Both of those shares also dropped. So Allianz seeing 2019 profits uh, after a solid third quarter result. Having said that, we're down 2.2% in terms of their equity price uh, right now. U.S. futures negative this morning. The focus uh, was yesterday very much on the U.S. and China um, agreeing to potentially roll back tariffs uh, if they do sign the phase one trade agreement. So that um, really boosted equities and uh, bonds, but that seems to at least be cooling that sentiment now because nothing obviously has been actually signed. So in terms of the bond markets this morning, uh, in terms of where we are, uh, we're at uh, one spot 91, uh, 1.91% for US yield. So we're down by a basis point. But of course, yesterday we saw yields jump 10 basis points. Uh, German uh, yields are negative 25 basis points, also heading lower down almost uh, two basis points. The other big mover, gold, uh, lost more than $30 a troy ounce. JP Morgan Citigroup tilting towards risk, so getting out of gold. Uh, and this morning uh, we trade in the gold spot price, one thousand four hundred and sixty six point sixteen, so down a tenth of one percent at the moment. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Gillis with more on what's going on around the world. Good morning. Good morning, Caroline. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg is once again considering a run for president in 2020, with an advisor saying he's concerned the current Democratic contenders will not defeat President Trump. Bloomberg has not made a final decision on whether to run, but has filed to get on the ballot in Alabama's primary, which has as an early filing deadline. Michael Bloomberg is founder and majority owner of Bloomberg LP, the parent of Bloomberg Radio. Nine suspects have been detained in Vietnam in connection with the Essex lorry trailer desk. They're being questioned about illegal immigration after the discovery of 39 bodies on an industrial state in Grays last month. Authorities in Hanoi have confirmed the victims came from six areas of Vietnam. And finally, three severe flood warnings which carry a risk to life have been triggered in South Yorkshire after torrential rain forced people to leave their homes. The heavy rains causing travel disruption. Some roads and railway lines have been closed. Parts of the Midlands have also been affected by heavy rain, which is forecast to clear and move southeast by lunchtime. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Bloomberg Opinion, informed perspectives, and expert data-driven commentary on breaking news. It is 9.20 in the city. Time to check in with Bloomberg Opinion. We're joined by opinion columnist Leonid Bershitsky, who's writing about the 30-year anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. And this is so fascinating, Leonid, because you're Russian, I'm American. I was raised to believe that it was really Ronald Reagan's, you know, military push that bankrupt the USSR and brought, you know, the Iron Curtain down. You're saying that's not true. Um, well, yes. Uh, the, if we're talking in more general terms, it's uh, the low oil price at that time that bankrupted the Soviet Union and not the arms race. Uh, if you look at the Soviet budgets from that period, the military spending wasn't what killed it. It was the lack of oil revenues. But in terms of the Berlin Wall, uh, I think there also Reagan gets too much credit for something that he uh, didn't really engineer or cause in any way. Because basically, we know that he called on Gorbachev to tear down that wall in 1987, which was two years before the wall actually was breached. And Gorbachev at that time had no power. He was not able to do anything of the kind, and, and, and nor could Reagan. 
<clears throat> and so if 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 uh, Germans are feeling they want to be thankful to any Americans in this situation, Leonid, if that is the case, which Americans should they thank? Because I think your piece has some uh, some interesting insight here. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think it's um, not a president, not Reagan and not George H.W. Bush, uh, but Bruce Springsteen. He um, gave this huge concert in uh, East Berlin in um, uh, 88, uh, where uh, 300,000 people were present and half of them without tickets. They actually gate crashed the concert, and that was one of the sort of first uh, alarm bells for the East German police that it couldn't really contain um, the sort of the urge of the people of East Berlin for freedom and for like Western culture and uh, being parts of the West. So thank you for the music. Yeah, the boss has been getting a lot of shout outs lately. A couple movies um, made about him, including a documentary and, um, a- a- and a book that was made into a film. Leonid, what do you think about the results? I mean, wh- what do you think, looking at the fall of the wall 30 years later, um, how do you think it's turned out? Well, enormous progress has been made throughout Eastern Europe um, in terms of catching up economically and in terms of building institutions. Uh, and uh, even though a, sort of a division between uh, East and West remains in Germany, obviously the East is poorer and the politics are different. Uh, the overall, the result, if you look back at 1990 or 1989, is huge. It's, it's a huge success. It's just, uh, you know, people don't realize, don't stop to think about how much has actually changed and how much things have improved. Yes, there's always further to go, perhaps, Leonid, but uh, a lot has been done in what is only 30 years, uh, as uh, Matt and I were discussing on TV a little bit earlier on. Thanks very much, Leonid, for bringing us your story. Bloomberg Opinion columnist Leonid Leonid Bashidsky. If you want to read more uh, of that story about the Berlin Wall, then uh, go to Bloomberg Opinion. Uh, That's at Bloomberg.com slash opinion or on the terminal by typing O-P-I-N go. Yeah, I thought it was funny that, uh, you know, I remember the wall coming down, and yeah, I was in high school, so it was a while back, but it doesn't seem like that long a period of time, Anna. Then I realized all of our producers, none of our producers, (laughs) were born (laughs) at the time. Wow, they weren't even in existence in any case. I guess I'm old. Uh, Still ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, calling all billionaires, Bloomberg learns Saudi Arabia is looking for its citizens to invest. This is Bloomberg. With a Bloomberg Business of Sports report, I'm Michael Barr. Digital media company Minute Media is in talks to buy the Players' Tribune, a website started by former baseball star Derek Jeter. According to people familiar with the matter, while the companies are in exclusive talks, there is no guarantee the discussions will lead to a deal. The potential value of the Players' Tribune is unknown to the public. Colorado, the first state to legalize recreational pot, has become the 14th to legalize sports betting. It joins Oregon and Nevada as the only states to collect revenue from both sin taxes. But even in that small club, Colorado stands out. Oregon misses out on millions by charging no sales tax, while Nevada has no income tax. Colorado collects on both, meaning money collected from legal sports betting and a much larger pool of pot taxes, potentially nearly a billion dollars total over the next five years, is essentially bonus revenue. And that is a Bloomberg Business of Sports report. I'm Michael Barr. The Bloomberg Business of Sports podcast. How did the Yankees become this mega valuable team? Where the money is flowing inside sports around the globe. From the marketing perspective, where are the dollars spent? From union heads to team owners, Scott Soshnick and Michael Barr speak to the names that power this multi-billion dollar industry. Boston Red Sox CEO Sam Kennedy. National Hockey League Commissioner Gary Bettman. Bloomberg Business of Sports. Listen today on Bloomberg.com the Bloomberg Business app or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Portfolio Analyst, powered by Interactive Brokers, helps sophisticated investors understand the health of their complete financial portfolio. Portfolio Analyst is free and easy-to-use personal finance software that creates a consolidated view of banking, brokerage, and credit card accounts. Compare your consolidated portfolio against more than 200 benchmarks or create customized benchmarks for analyzing performance. Calculate time and money-weighted rates of return and use Portfolio Analyst for forecasting. Learn more and download Portfolio Portfolio Analyst free at ibkr.com slash PA. 
We just got back from a beautiful city break in Bath. Midweek is the perfect time to beat the crowds. Just an hour and a half by train from London. It was so relaxing. We headed straight for Bath Christmas Market. Oh, I can still smell the roasted chestnuts and mulled wine from the chalets. We dropped off our Christmas shopping at the hotel. Then it was off to be spellbound at the Theatre Royal Bath. There's so much to do in Bath. I'm already planning my next trip. Discover the magic of Bath this Christmas. Plan ahead at visitbath.co.uk slash Christmas. They don't chant your name when you give blood or sing songs about you. But patients and their families will remember you forever because your blood can change their lives. We need more blood donors in Tooting, the West End and Edgware. Bleed for London. Join us today at blood.co.uk. This is the sound of Helen and Peter hiking to the fairy tale fortress high above the winter wonderland below. Or it would be if they hadn't stopped at the first beer house they came to. There it is, Helen and Peter. There's your incredible. Fly from London Gatwick to Salzburg from £29 each way. With British Airways, incredible is within reach. Terms and conditions apply. Limited availability and dates. Fair quoted is each way based on a return. CBA.com slash Gatwick for details. At Argos, get them the toys they're dreaming of this Christmas. Save 20% when you spend £20 or more on toys with called Toys 20, including top brands like Peppa Pig and Lego. Enjoy same-day home delivery seven days a week. With Argos, you get to go. Offer ends the 12th of November. Subject to availability exclusion. Apply. Delivery conditions apply. Order by 6 p.m. 90% UK coverage. London. Switch to Vodafone, the UK's best mobile network, and be unlimited because the best phones deserve the best network and our new unlimited data plans. The future is exciting. Ready? Vodafone. Max download speeds apply to unlimited data. Best network is voted by readers of trusted reviews. Terms at vodafone.co.uk slash unlimited. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the world's most fantastical sensational number. 83 million. Tonight's Euro Millions jackpot is a massive 83 million pounds. Euro Millions, celebrating 25 years of the National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. Estimated jackpot. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. Rainy, 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 rainy. Sergey, why are you in such good mood? It's raining. And rain means we take meal pups to cinema. And cinema means they'll be entertained. Ah, and entertained means they're also quiet for a couple of hours. <laughs> Oh, let's go. Enjoy more time together with two-for-one cinema tickets from Meerkat Movies with the Meerkat app when you buy through Compare the Market. Qualifying purchases, Tuesdays or Wednesdays, participating cinemas, two standard tickets only, cheapest free. T's and C's apply. Casting live to London on DAB Digital Radio. To New York, Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991. To Boston, Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg. Daybreak Europe. Good morning from the German capital of Berlin. I'm Matt Miller. And I'm Anna Edwards. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Good morning, everybody. Matt, these markets then uh, dominated by trade excitement and then uh, uh, concern that we lack detail and diary dates and locations and all the other things that are needed for deals to actually be done. Yeah, well, I mean, there certainly has been a lot. I mean, it's been an incredible week, right? Um, The DAX, for example, has been up for the last five trading sessions so it's down a little today i guess people are taking a little bit of money off the table but it's um it's been quite a rally we see just to remind listeners year to date uh the dax index up 25 percent more than 25 percent year to date um the the uh the gains across europe really are stunning um with the exception of the uk which is only well, only up about 10%, but of course there's been a real change in the value of the pound. In terms of what we see happening today, almost all equity indexes uh, across Europe are giving up the ghost a little bit. Um, the OMX in Stockholm is up marginally, but everything else is down about a third to a half a percent. And we see U.S. futures also trading down. So you could see some profit tape taking. Well, wait a second. Did I, did I just pull up? Yeah, U.S. futures also trading down. Sorry, I have two. I have WEI open at the same time as WEIF, so I have to so many screens. Look and see. Uh, thank 
goodness, I have so many screens. I don't know what I do without them. Um, we're, we're looking at risk assets um, that are also, I mean, at levels that we haven't seen in a long time, but coming off a little today. For example, Treasury's uh, yield rode up to 1.96% yesterday. Now we're back down a little, 1.91. Um, but still, it's a level that, you know, I, I can't remember having talked about for at least uh, uh, six months now. Mm. Looking at a uh, dollar that can buy more than 109 yen and gold continues to come down now at 1467 a troy ounce and we get all excited don't we about the gains made this year in equities and every time we do that and i do it too and then i have to remind myself the big sell-off we saw in december and in fact it was more than just december wasn't it it was not, it was yeah, all of the, the still, winter running in running into the start of the year still i mean it's just look I, I realized last year was a bad year, and so this year you're making up for it. It just seems to be a big move in a yeah. very short amount of time. And during you know crashes, you're used to seeing you know meltdowns of this size and scale, but I'm just not used to seeing melt ups <laughs> that are so strong. Okay, let's talk about uh, an ongoing conversation, an ongoing story we've been covering here at Bloomberg. One of our other top stories, Saudi Arabia is pursuing a commitment from its wealthier citizens to buy into the upcoming Aramco IPO. The kingdom is trying to shore up demand for the listing as international investors bulk at Riyadh's insistence that the energy giant is worth $2 trillion. For more on this story, Bloomberg Energy Editor Helen Helen Robertson joins us here in our London studio. Helen, good morning to you. Uh, So why is it that the state is trying to tap these wealthy individuals? Is it as simple as a lack of international enthusiasm, come on, show your nationalistic spirit, get your wallet out. There's not a lack of international enthusiasm. So we've heard this week that there's been um, some significant interest from um, Chinese uh, state-owned entities, uh, ranging from uh, so Sinopec, the state-owned uh, oil firm, uh, to the uh, Silk Road um, Fund. So it, it's not that there's a lack of um, interest, and certainly not from uh, bankers as well, trying to obviously um, uh, get a, a piece of the action. Um, the discrepancy is over the valuation. We've seen um, from some banks and analysts an, an extraordinary wide range uh, from about sort of 1.2 trillion to 2.3 trillion, sort of at the the highest estimates. As we know, um, obviously, the uh, Crown Prince was targeting initially a valuation of about 2 trillion. He's later lowered that to uh, between 1.6 and 1.8. But that's still an enormous discrepancy over um, sort of where analysts uh, think that the true valuation of the company should be. So obviously that's sort of causing, raising some eyebrows and causing some issues. So it's certainly not a lack of interest in it. It's more um, perhaps lack of uh, sort of detail. Lack and of agreement on pricing. Exactly. Mm. Well, exactly. can he can he just demand the money? I mean, last year he took uh, the richest people in the kingdom, you know, multiple dozens of billionaires and locked them up in the Rich Carlton for a while and didn't let them out until they gave him what he wanted. So can't he just say, you must buy X amount of shares of Aramco? Well, he's certainly been offering uh, preferential terms to um, <laughs> uh, so local um, uh, wealthy uh, Saudis. Obviously, they're doing everything that they can to certainly encourage um, their wealthy assistants to invest in the in the Ramco um, IPO. Um, and obviously, some of the people that have been targeted, um, I think, were initially detained in the Ritz Carlton in 2017, as you mentioned. So, um, obviously, that's a sort of separate tricky issue to deal with um i certainly don't think that you know, obviously with foreign investors he um he would be able to do anything like that um but as i said i mean i think the issue uh, it's it's more sort of around the um yeah the uh, the valuation i mean the longer term um issues in terms of contracting oil demand growth all sorts of climate issues to do with that um and the oil price as well i mean as we know um it struggled to gain much above 60 dollars a barrel this year for all sorts of reasons mm. rage um, um, ranging from uh, sort of looming economic headwinds, the U.S.-China trade war. Um, so there are all sorts of other longer-term um, issues that could potentially affect the uh, the valuation as well. Helen, thank you very much. It's funny, isn't it, uh, uh, Matt, that uh, we're talking here about investing in oil to enable an economy to diversify away from oil, which uh, there's a certain irony in. Uh, Bloomberg Energy Editor Helen Robertson, thank you very much for joining us. All right, let's get to Leanne Garens now for the other global news headlines. Leanne? 
Good morning, Matt. Let's start here in the UK. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is announcing plans for special visas for doctors and nurses. The new system would introduced will be introduced after the UK leaves the EU. Healthcare is set to be a key battleground in this election campaign. Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn has repeatedly accused Johnson of trying to sell out the NHS as part of post-Brexit trade deals. French President Emmanuel Macron has attacked NATO, saying it's effectively brain-dead. He wants Europe to create its own military group rather than rely on the increasingly withdrawn US and the creaking transatlantic alliance. In response, German Chancellor Angela Merkel described NATO as irreplaceable. In Hong Kong, a student who fell at a car park near Clashes on Monday has now died. Bloomberg's Ian Marlowe says this development is already prompting more demonstrations in the Asian financial hub. Chow Tzu Lok suffered a brain injury after falling early Monday as police carried out a dispersal operation nearby using tear gas. A spokesman for the hospital authority confirmed on Friday that he was certified dead shortly after 8 a.m. Hong Kong's government said it was deeply saddened and offered condolences to Chow's family in a statement responding to media inquiries about his death. In Hong Kong, Ian Marlowe, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And Mauritius starts counting votes this morning following the general election held on Thursday in the Indian Ocean Island nation. Bloomberg's Kamlish Bakaroy says more of more of Africa's best place has more on Africa's best place to do business according to the World Bank which is also known for its white sandy beaches. The outcome will determine whom of the three former prime ministers will be at the helm of the government for the next five years. Voting in the Indian Ocean Island nation ended at 6 p.m. local time yesterday. It's the first three-cornered fight since 1976 with no outright winner on paper. In Mauritius, Kamrish Bakari Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Global news 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Jan Gerrand. This is Bloomberg Anna. Yeah, thank you very much. Now with your morning sports news, here's George Alderman. It was a great night for British sides in the Europa League. Manchester United beat Partizan Belgrade 3-0 at Old Trafford, while Celtic secured a dramatic 2-1 win over Lazio in Rome as both sides progressed to the last 32. United manager Oli Gunnar Solskjaer says it was just the performance he wanted to see from his side after naming a strong team. This is a little bit of a template on how we want to play, definitely. But of course it's the opposition that allow you to play this way as well. No disrespect to Partizan, um, but they gave us spaces. Rangers remain on track for a place in the knockout stages after getting past Porto 2-0 at Ibrox. Manager Steven Gerrard's been asked where the result ranks during his time in charge in Glasgow. I think right up there with the best. You know, I'm sure people will try and find out, find problems with Porto and the reason why they're not what he was and blah, blah, blah. But they're a good team. They've got good players. So I think my players deserve a lot of credit. Wolves are also looking good to get out of their group following their 1-0 victory over Slovan Bratislava. Thanks very much to George Oldman for the update there on the sports news. Matt, we're going to be talking more about where these markets head, whether there's further upside to go for stocks. We heard from Howard Marks, didn't we, overnight? He was cautioning about a risk on stance, whereas Goldman Sachs saying, look, the Fed is acting in a way that is supportive for risk assets. And they saw increased risk appetite as a result of the recent Fed cuts. Yeah, it's interesting. I always love to hear from Howard Marks because um, he's he's an investor that I think distressed asset buyers look to for a signal. You know, when can we go in and buy stuff? And he's saying also, like, not yet. Coming up, we're going to talk to Christian Keller, head of economics research at Barclays. This is Bloomberg. Three, two, one. Oh, no. Which, Which button, button am I... I... Uh... When every second counts, you can't wing it. Uh, guys, a little help up here? In a home fire, you may have less than two minutes to get out. So make a family home fire escape plan. Then practice home fire drills at least twice a year so everyone knows what to do when they hear... Prepare your family at ready.gov slash fire drill. Brought to you by FEMA, the Act Council, and Make Safe Happen. Every investor should ask questions. Is our money in the right place? What am I really being charged? And is it eating into my returns? Is my advisor a fiduciary? 
Is he always a fiduciary? A good place to start is with an independent registered investment advisor. As fiduciaries, they live by a simple rule. Always act in the best interest of their clients. That's why Charles Schwab is proud to support more independent financial advisors and their clients than anyone else. Visit findyourindependentadvisor.com. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. That's why we continually optimize SEI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com slash C's change. Business is constant. We just got back from a beautiful city break in Bath. Midweek is the perfect time to beat the crowds. Just an hour and a half by train from London. It was so relaxing. We headed straight for Bath Christmas Market. Oh, I can still smell the roasted chestnuts and mulled wine from the chalets. Next, we donned our skates for Bath on Ice. I'm a natural. Didn't have to hold on to anything or anyone. There's so much to do in Bath. I'm already planning my next trip. Discover the magic of Bath this Christmas. Plan ahead at visitbath.co.uk slash Christmas. Whatever job you're searching for, you can find it on LinkedIn. First jobs, flexible jobs, work from home on a Friday jobs, advertising jobs, accounting jobs, HR, PR, even ER jobs, Soho jobs, Shoreditch jobs, keep me away from the central line jobs, banking jobs, building jobs, never ever boring jobs, small jobs, big jobs, lunch in borough market jobs, or even voiceover jobs, which is how I ended up recording this ad. Search millions of jobs on LinkedIn and find one meant for you. Freezing Friday mornings like this are cruel. You cough, you splutter, so does your car. It's battery dead, killed by an icy claw. Will anyone stand up to winter? Yes, you, come to Halfords. We fit new batteries on the spot from just £15. And we're open late seven days a week. See Halfords.com for opening hours. Here in Chiswick. Ready for the cold snap? Ready for anything. Halfords for life's journeys. Batteries sold separately. Selected vehicles only in most stores. At the Bank of Antan Deck, mortgages are on the menu. I was in the chippy last night and it hit me. Go on. We should give all our new mortgage customers a thousand pounds of spuds. Potatoes. Yeah, jackets, roasties, dolphin wars. I mean, what's not to love? Hey, yeah, we could call it Mashback. Genius. Meanwhile, at Santander, they're giving their customers a thousand pounds cash back on selected first time buyer mortgages. See what's possible at Santander. Lending subject to status and criteria. Cash back given on completion and repayable if mortgage closed within two years. Offer can be withdrawn. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. Spot a bargain in the Debenham Spectacular event. Up to 30% off throughout the store and up to 15% off beauty and fragrance. Shop now in store and at Debenhams.com. Breathe in and out. Every day, you take 20,000 breaths, potentially exposing yourself to harmful particles of pollution. According to the Royal College of Physicians, air pollution contributes to around 1 in 20 deaths in the UK. But at E.ON, we believe it's time to do something about it. We've committed to installing ultra-fast electric vehicle charge points. We offer solar panels and batteries that collect and store energy. And we've helped a city-wide transport operator introduce a large fleet of emission-free electric buses. It's time to clear the air. Search Eon Clean Air. In cinemas, November 15. So you're going to build a car to be Ferrari. With a Ford. Correct. Get ready for Le Mans 66. I hate guys like us because we're different. Starring Matt Damon and Christian Bale. What are they doing? Making their car go faster. That's more like it! Based on the incredible true story. You got a plan? 
Tyres, a Ford versus Ferrari. No, I thought the whole point was to win the damned race. Le Mans 66, headed in cinemas and IMAX November 15. Your new neighbor is a musician. His creative peak is at 3 a.m. They're doing roadworks next to your house. Your dog thinks he's a wolf at night. There's always a reason to travel. Fly with Lufthansa's incredible fares around the world. For example, to Bangkok, Shanghai, or Singapore. Book now on Lufthansa.com. Conditions apply. Say yes to the world. Lufthansa. It's headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg's European headquarters here in London, I'm Caroline Hepke with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. The US stock 600 currently down four tenths of 1% and looking to the US market open, we're down a tenth of 1% for the S&P 500. But obviously we went through that record high yesterday uh, for European equities. We're currently trading at 404 spot 97, so uh, below uh, the record high that we did see. Uh, and that's really as the optimism about the US and China reaching the phase one uh, deal that would also include rolling back tariffs uh, seems to be slightly more doubtful. We have basically nothing signed, even though um, both sides do agree that a tariff rollback would potentially be part of the agreement. Uh, As for individual stocks of interest, we still have got quite a few results out this morning. So, Credit Agricole, Allianz, the Tixis, Richemont. Actually, we see their share prices now mainly reversing the losses that we had seen earlier this morning. That's despite, for example, a profit miss at Richemont on the Hong Kong protests. Uh, and I'll give you a price on Allianz, also gaining three-tenths of 1%. They do see 2019 a profit and a solid third quarter for them. In terms of the bond markets this morning, uh, there was huge action yesterday, obviously. Uh, we moved in terms of sovereign bonds plunging around the world. Ten basis points higher for uh, US yields. We're currently at, uh, if I get up uh, the US yield for you, WB on your terminal, of course, one spot 9%. We're down a basis point here in Europe. Negative 25 basis points. We moved also 10 basis points yesterday for German Bund yield. So a negative 25 basis points down two basis points uh, in uh, in that market. Um, and the other things to watch out for are gold. JP Morgan Citigroup they're tilting towards risk, saying that they're getting out of gold. Gold heading for its worst weekly loss in more than two years. So some of the safe havens really seeing uh, sort of being rejected. 1,466 spot $43 uh, per troy out. We're actually down a tenth of 1% on gold this morning. So that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Gerrans with more going on around the world. Good morning. Good morning, Caroline. Brazil's top court has ruled that convicted criminals should be jailed only after their appeals are exhausted. This move may allow high-profile prisoners, including former President Lula da Silva, to walk free. Lula led the South American country between 2003 and 2010, but was jailed last year. Australian authorities say an unprecedented number of emergency level bushfires are threatening the state of New South Wales. More than 90 blazes were raging across the state on Friday. The fires are being exuberated by gusty winds and extreme heat. And finally, a judge in New York has ordered President Trump to pay $2 million for misusing his charitable foundation. He was accused of spending funds to benefit the 2016 presidential campaign. In a statement last night, he suggested he was needed Neither sorry nor in the wrong. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Jan Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Matt. Leanne, thank you so much for that, <laughs> Leanne Gerrans, there with your world national news. Now, Nathan Hager is standing by for the final time this week at 731 yep. Lexington Avenue. Happy Friday, Nathan. What do you Happy got Happy Friday to, to you, Matt. Well, the U.S.-China trade story, as it has been for much of the week, if not the last few months, remains uh, front and center for us this morning. We are seeing a bit of a pullback to the risk on with the U.S. confirming a phase one deal would include some tariff rollbacks. So have the equity markets priced in this first step agreement? We'll get the view of Julian Lafarga, head equity specialist at Barclays. He's going to join us shortly. Plus, uh, we've got developments on trade with Europe, word that automakers there might get a reprieve from Tariff Man. And we are watching shares of Disney in the pre-market 
scoring big on the big screen, the uh, entertainment giant did in the fourth quarter. But now the focus is going to turn to Disney Plus and all the spending that's going to have to go into that streaming service. So we'll check in with Bloomberg Intelligence media analyst Geetha Ranganathan to get the outlook on the mouse. Join me and Karen Moscow on this Friday for Bloomberg Daybreak. Matt. Very much looking forward to it, Nathan. Thanks so much. Nathan Hager and Karen Moscow then up next, if you're listening on Sirius XM channel 119. If you're tuned in on London DAB digital radio, you'll hear Bloomberg surveillance. Matt, let's uh, round out this uh, hour on Bloomberg Radio uh, by talking to Christian Keller, head of uh, economics research at Barclays, who joins us here in the studio. Uh, Christian, I want to ask you about uh, what's needed at the ECB uh, next under Christine Lagarde. We have a great story on the Bloomberg this morning, uh, which talks about where she might be successful in pushing for a little bit more fiscal stimulus and where she might not be. Others cautioning that this isn't something that an, that an ECB head should be doing. Your thoughts on where fiscal stimulus is going to come next? I mean, first of all, I think uh, uh, by now the view is that, you know, policy needs to act uh, more comprehensively. And it's quite normal that uh, central bankers have been asking for the fiscal side to do its part. And Draghi has been doing this uh, throughout his term. So I don't think it's unusual for Lagarde to ask for, in a way, fiscal stimulus, in particular for more infrastructure investment, public spending in parts uh, in the euro area where there is room. And the room is, I think it's quite well known, is in particular in Germany, the largest economy that also has quite a, a healthy fiscal trajectory. And I think she will continue to uh, to emphasize this. And uh, then, you know, I, I think there are signs that uh, the mind in Germany may be slightly changing towards being more accommodative on the fiscal side. And also on issues like banking union, where we had obviously some news uh, yesterday. Well, the question is, I mean, how will it help? There's so many things to unpack here, Christian. First off, um, how detrimental have negative rates been? Then Mario Draghi says the negative side effects they see can be, um, to some extent, um, uh, helped by fiscal stimulus. And then if governments agree and spend it, what are they going to do to stimulate? I mean, they're not going to build roads. That's not going to happen. That's not going to bring stimulus quickly. And the Germans say bureaucracy is holding them back from any spending. What do you think is is on the list of possibilities? Helicopter money? Well, I mean, first of all, I, I would say, you know, it's very common now to talk about the negative effects of uh, uh, of negative rates. But frankly, so far, the ECB's view, and I think that is in the numbers, is that, you know, while it is very clear that there's a theoretical possibility that at some point a reverse rate is reached where the banking system reacts negatively to the its inability to you know, roll on or push negative rates on its depositors. So far, what we've seen effectively in the euro area is that lending rates have been coming down. We have also seen, and the ECB is quite open about it, that negative rates had probably an effect to the interest rate, uh, to the exchange rate channel. You know, the euro is quite weak. So, you know, while we may be coming into an area in the future where these negative interest rates have a, you know, have negative consequences so far, I think it has not been the case simply. You know, we talk about it, but so far I think the, the, the evidence mm. is that they have actually helped. That, that's um, interesting. I, I was just looking at a piece actually on the Bloomberg, from Bloomberg Opinion, written by Jim Bianco, president of the, uh, and founder of the Bianco Research Group, where he says negative interest rates, he says most bankers and insurance executives think they are a bad idea because they hurt the foundation of the financial system. Is that not a complete picture then of, uh, of negative rates? You think they have benefits beyond what he's talking about there? I, I will tell you that I've heard uh, bad reports on negative rates from the CEO of Goldman Sachs, this week alone, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, mm. the CFO uh, and deputy CEO of Deutsche Bank. Well, you wonder well whether it's just CFO bankers who Commerce don't like Bank. them. I, I, was, I was going to say, look, this is not a surprise. I mean, you know, negative rates make it more difficult to have positive net interest rate margins. Of course, it makes the world of, of banks more difficult. You know, I work for one myself. I mean, there's no, there's no, pro, there's no doubt about this. Uh, we would be better in an ideal world where we had positive rates and a steep yield curve. That's ideal for anyone who's into the business of maturity transformation. Fact is, though, however, that, you know, so far, if you look in aggregate at the situation is that, you know, the volumes of lending have gone up when the ECB delivered the package and the volumes, you know, the net interest income overall may, you know, was positive. It made up for the 
margin they lost through the addition of business. Now, you can't do this forever. And there's no doubt if you keep this on for longer and longer, you know, ultimately, and we know this from Japan, you know, the negative interest rate in the flat yield curve will have a negative impact on the, on the system. And I think this is what all the CEOs, the bankers, particularly insurance companies have been pointing out. You know, uh, they have been changing the business model in part. You know, some of the, some of the products that German insurance companies have been selling, they no longer do. And, you know, it is painful for them. But again, as a central banker, you have to take the overall macro, uh, you know, macro outlook or the macro interpretation. So, and so far, I would say it has not been negative yet. So the concern, though, from bankers, I talked to a ton of even just regular you know, Joe Sixpack bankers in Frankfurt yesterday, and they were saying the problem is, uh, yeah, loans are going up. Rich people can get money for super cheap, but no one else can. And it really exacerbates income inequality. Do you not see that? I think uh, in particular, when you talk about Frankfurt in a market like Germany, there is a, a culture of saving that has been, you know, not to participate in uh, in equity markets, but rather, you know, bringing your money to a to a bank, put it in a fixed saving account and, uh, you know, hoping to get your 3 4% nominal return. And that is, of course, no longer possible. So I, I agree that in a way, given, you know, current, current saving patterns, in a way, it will hurt those, you know, the small savers, so to say. Uh, even though, as the Bundesbank president, Weidmann, has pointed out himself, if you look at real yields, mm. you know, there were times in the 70s when the small savers got negative yields exactly like they do now. Okay. But, of course, they had positive nominal rates. Christian, thank you very much. Really fascinating conversation. Christian Keller, Head of Economics Research at Barclays. Uh, he's heading on to uh, TV. And, in fact, uh, next, you will hear, here on Bloomberg Radio Daybreak with Nathan Hager and Karen Moscow. Or, if you're listening in London on DAB Digital Radio, Bloomberg surveillance more than just we just got back from a beautiful city break in bath midweek is the perfect time to beat the crowds just an hour and a half by train from london it was so relaxing we headed straight for bath christmas market oh i can still smell the roasted chestnuts and mulled wine from the chalets we dropped off our christmas shopping at the hotel then it was off to be spellbound at the theater royal bath there's so much to do in bath i'm already planning my next trip Discover the magic of Bath this Christmas. Plan ahead at visitbath.co.uk slash Christmas. It's another Friday morning. Yet another chilly day. So ditch the British winter and chase the sun across the globe with British Airways from London Gatwick. Experience Mexican culture and relax by the Caribbean Sea. Fly from London Gatwick to Cancun with British Airways. From £275 each way, based on a return fare. Don't miss out. Book by November the 12th at ba.com slash winter sun. With British Airways, incredible is within reach. Booking fees and conditions may apply. Limited availability selected flights in March. 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is Bloomberg Radio. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak for Friday, November 8th, 2019. Coming up this hour... Trade talks remain front and center as the U.S. confirms an agreement to roll back tariffs. In Europe, there's word that President Trump will not hit automakers with levies. And Disney shares surge as earnings beat and anticipation runs high for its new streaming service. More House testimony transcripts claim President Trump called for Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton. I'm Michael Biden. More ahead. I'm John Stanshaw, and in sports, all three local hockey teams played. The Rangers won, the Islanders and Devils lost, NFL, the Raiders beat the Chargers. That's all straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak, on Bloomberg 1130 New York, Bloomberg 991 Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 1061 Boston, Bloomberg 960 San Francisco, Sirius XM 119, and around the world on BloombergRadio.com and via the Bloomberg Business app. Good Friday morning. I'm Karen Moscow. I'm Nathan Hager. Bloomberg Daybreak brought to you by Innovalon, a leading provider of cloud-based platforms empowering data-driven healthcare for insurance companies, physicians, pharmacy, and pharmaceutical companies. Innovalon Data has a story to tell. Innovalon gives it a voice. 
And U.S. futures are slumping into this final trading day of the week. 501 on Wall Street, and we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are down four points this morning. Dow futures down 23. NASDAQ futures down 15. The DAX in Germany is down a quarter percent. So is the FTSE 100, and the CAC in Paris is down three tenths percent. Nikkei 225 in Japan gained a quarter percent, and the Hang Seng in Hong Kong was down seven tenths percent. Ten-year Treasury up two thirty seconds, yield 1.90 percent. Yield on the two-year, 1.67 percent. NYMEX crude oil down 1.4 percent or 80 cents at 56.36 a barrel. COMEX gold little changed at 14.66.70 an ounce. The euro, 1.1039 against the dollar. The yen, 109.35. Nathan. And Karen, trade continues to dominate investor focus. Sentiment is mostly positive after yesterday's record close for U.S. stocks. The White House has confirmed an agreement to roll back tariffs in phases as part of any deal. Bloomberg's Dan Ten Kate has more from Hong Kong. They haven't agreed to anything yet, but just the fact that they've agreed that there will be a phased approach and tariff reductions is fairly significant, and it's something that China would need to move forward politically for Xi Jinping. The negotiations on a phase one deal should be pretty straightforward from here. That's according to Heidi Crabo Redeker, fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have a lot of twists and turns in this story as we lead up to whatever the date is that the two leaders decide that they're and actually meet and agree to uh, whatever the phase one deal is. And I do think there will be an agreement on a phase one deal. We're also hearing from officials in the Trump administration, including senior White House advisor Kellyanne Conway, who says President Trump is anxious to sign a deal. At the same time, though, White House trade advisor Peter Navarro warns that the current actual agreement includes no measures to remove tariffs. That's put a damper on sentiment this morning. Here with more is Bloomberg market strategist Mark Cranfield. Peter Navarro saying that, yes, there's some discussions going on, but the final decision still rests with Donald Trump. So that was taken slightly negatively by markets today. Of course, it could also just be the fact that they're coming into the weekend and people using that as a good excuse just to lighten up a bit. It's not being dramatic, but certainly it did take the shine off of what's been a very strong week. It's a week that's seen Treasury yields soar, with 10-year yields gaining about 30 basis points. Stocks in Asia sold off a bit to close out the week, despite upbeat trade data out of China. Bloomberg's Juliet Sally joins us from Singapore with details. Good morning, Juliet. Good morning, Nathan and Karen. The MSCI Asia-Pacific Index finished marginally lower Friday, yet did manage a fifth weekly gain, its longest winning streak since July. JGBs were set for their worst week since 2013, as Japan's 10-year yield inched towards an exit from negative territory. China's trade surplus was a beast. The onshore yuan on track for a fifth weekly gain, while the offshore yuan remained past seven to the dollar Friday as the PBOC set the daily fixing midpoint below seven for the first time since August. In Singapore, I'm Juliet Sali, Bloomberg Daybreak. Julia, thank you. Meanwhile, in Europe, we're getting word that President Trump will not hit automakers with tariffs. And Bloomberg's Sebastian Salek joins us live from London with the details. Good morning, Sebastian. Good morning, Karen and Nathan. This is according to the European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker. He told a German newspaper, quote, you're talking to a fully informed man. Juncker's comments echoed those by U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross last week when he said Trump may not need to impose auto tariffs after holding good conversations with automakers in the EU. Trump gave himself a deadline of mid-November to decide whether to impose these levies. The EU threatened then to retaliate with tariffs of $39 billion on American goods if the president then carried out this threat. Live in London, I'm Sebastian Salik, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Sebastian, thank you. Turning to earnings now, investors like what they're seeing from Disney. Shares gained 5% after profit topped estimates. Anticipation is also high for the debut of Disney Plus next week. Bloomberg's John Tucker joins us live now with more on that. Good morning, John. Yeah, Nathan, CEO Bob Iger, who turned Disney into Hollywood's most successful movie studio, is now betting on its family-focused streaming service, Disney Plus, which launches November 12th. We're enthusiastic about what we saw the consumer reaction to be. We certainly feel good about the product that's going into the marketplace next week, and we'll know a lot more in just a few days. Well, Disney also reached an agreement to put its new streaming service on Amazon, Samsung, and LG devices, ensuring the company is going to have access to tens of millions of viewers. Now, with the idea of spending money to make money, Disney did report a 66% drop in quarterly profit to pay for the Netflix-style streaming service. Unlike Netflix, Disney Plus will charge only $7 a month. John Tucker, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, John, thank you. Shares of Gap are down 
almost 10 percent now in early trading after earnings missed analyst estimates. But the real shocker was the retailer firing CEO Art Peck. You get more on that from Bloomberg's Charlie Pellet. Gap says after a brief transition, Peck will exit the president and CEO role and vacate his post on the retailer's board. Robert Fisher, the company's current non-executive chairman and a member of the founding family, will step in as president and CEO on an interim basis. Peck's termination comes after years of struggles for the apparel company. Peck, a former consultant, tried shaking up leadership and experimenting, but to little effect. Charlie Pellet, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Charlie, thanks for that. And finally, a programming note. Tune in this morning for an interview with Rafael Bostic. Bloomberg's Michael McKee sits down for a conversation with the Atlanta Fed president at 8.30 a.m. Wall Street time, right here on Bloomberg Radio and Bloomberg Television. Straight ahead, we bring you the latest world and national news. This is Bloomberg. And it is 5.07 on Wall Street. Let's bring in Michael Barr now to get a check of what's going on around the world on this Friday morning. Michael. Thank you very much, Nathan. The latest witness transcript released by impeachment investigators includes testimony that President Trump wanted Ukraine's president to publicly tie Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton to a corruption investigation. Bloomberg's Bob Moon reports. Trump wanted nothing less, according to State Department official George Kent, than for President Zelensky to go to a microphone and say, investigations, Biden and Clinton. Clinton, he clarified, was shorthand for the 2016 election. Democrat Eric Swalwell says all the testimony fits a pattern. We have not heard a single witness yet provide testimony that would suggest this was anything other than defense dollars for dirt. Kent also told investigators that a staffer to then-Vice President Joe Biden had rebuffed him in 2015 when he raised concerns about the involvement of Biden's son in a Ukraine an energy firm, explaining that Biden's priority was with his son, Bo, who was dying of cancer. Bob Moon, Bloomberg Daybreak. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg is once again considering a run for president in 2020, with an advisor saying he is concerned the current Democratic contenders will not defeat President Trump. Mr. Bloomberg has not made a final decision on whether to run, but has filed to get on the ballot in Alabama's presidential primary, which has an early filing deadline. Michael Bloomberg is founder and majority owner of Bloomberg LP, the parent of Bloomberg Radio. Jeff Sessions says that he will run for the Alabama Senate seat that he vacated in 2017 to become attorney general. Sessions spoke on Fox News' Tucker Carlson tonight. It's not my seat in the Senate. But I believe I have something to give. I have some convictions that I think need to be pushed. We need to get some Republicans moving. They haven't been pushing hard enough to advance the Trump agenda. And so that's what I look forward to doing. And and I think I can contribute to that. Sessions' entry shakes up the race to defeat Democratic incumbent Doug Jones. A Hong Kong student who suffered a brain injury after falling in a parking garage near a protest earlier this week has died. It could potentially inflame demonstrations this weekend. It's one of the signs that the holiday season is upon us. The Rockefeller Center Christmas tree has been cut and will soon be installed in front of the ice skating rink. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg, Nathan. Thanks, Michael. It's 5.09 on Wall Street. Time for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update with John Stashauer. Nathan, the Islanders were the hottest team in hockey. Ten wins in a row, and last night in Brooklyn, very much on their way to an 11th in a row. They led Pittsburgh 3-0 in the third period. Penguins came back, scored three times in a span of just over seven minutes, and then Brian Rust on assisted in overtime to win 4-3. to three. Isles pick up a point, but their winning streak is over. Rangers moved over 500 with a 4-2 win at Carolina. Henrik Lundqvist wins on back-to-back nights. 35 saves versus Detroit and 45 more last night. Devils lost in Calgary 5-2. Knicks are in Dallas tonight. It was 10 months ago that Christoph Porzingis demanded the Knicks trade him. He's helped the Mavs to a 5-2 and two start. Nets begin a five-game road trip tonight in Portland. College hoops. Rutgers opened its season with a two-point win over Bryant. The Yankees have a new pitching coach, Matt Blake's only 33 years old. He was a Yankee scout, was most recently working with the Indians. He replaces Larry Rothschild, who had the job the past 11 years. Week 10 in the NFL underway. The Raiders scored with a minute to go, beat the Chargers in Oakland 26-24. Jets and Giants Sunday. The Jets coach, Adam Gase. Probably didn't it hit me really until I was here for a little bit of two teams in the same city, the same stadium. You don't appreciate that from the, when you're somewhere else until you're here, and then you kind of realize what kind of this, having two teams in the same city in New York, it's just it's different. I can see why why, the, why there's, there's a rivalry there. It's a cool game to be involved in. 
One positive for the 1-7 and seven Jets. They have cleared the air with safety Jamal Adams, who had been upset. His name was in trade rumors. Adams met with Gase, and general manager Joe Douglas says he now wants to remain with the team. But the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stash. Nathan? All right, John, thank you. Tune in this weekend for the Bloomberg Business of Sports Show when we speak with the man behind the New Jersey Devils and the Philadelphia 76ers. You can catch our conversation with Harris Blitzer Sports and Entertainment President Hugh Weber tonight at 8 and tomorrow at 11 a.m. on Bloomberg Radio. Or you can uh, listen to it anytime you want if you subscribe to Bloomberg Business of Sports as a podcast. S&P futures lower by three points. Dow futures down 17. NASDAQ futures a loss of almost 15 points. This is Bloomberg. Why has J.D. Power ranked Commonwealth Financial Network number one in independent advisor satisfaction among financial investment firms for the sixth straight time? We think it comes down to one thing. You. Because it's your input and feedback that keeps us focused on what's most important to you and your clients and continually pushes us to be the best we can be. Maybe that's why we receive top marks in every category of the J.D. Power 2019 Advisor Satisfaction Survey. They named us number one in client support, number one in firm leadership, number one in operational support, number one in compensation, number one in professional development support, and number one in technology support. Ready to partner with the best? Call Commonwealth at 866-462-3638 or visit Commonwealth.com and feel the power. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. For 2019 J.D. Power Award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. The lifeblood of tech startups isn't just money. It's executive and technical skills. The kind of skills that companies need to build real products. And the skills that venture capitalist Chris Sugden of Edison Partners sees in the graduates that are coming out of New Jersey Institute of Technology. The amazing thing about NGIT is their graduates, they have multiple offers on average, not just one. They're coming out with real skill sets that are immediately hireable and available to them. I think we see an understanding by the faculty and administration at NGIT that we've got to train and educate the whole student, not just their you know, one side of their brain. And I do think that's sort of part of the DNA today. There's practical and there's sort of academia and merging those two together and understanding that if we're going to have our young people go get great jobs and have great successful careers, they've got to have both sides of their brain activated. And I think we see that with NJIT. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. We just got back from a beautiful city break in Bath. Midweek is the perfect time to beat the crowds. Just an hour and a half by train from London. It was so relaxing. We headed straight for Bath Christmas Market. Oh, I can still smell the roasted chestnuts and mulled wine from the chalets. Next, we donned our skates for Bath on Ice. I'm a natural. Didn't have to hold on to anything or anyone. There's so much to do in Bath. I'm already planning my next trip. Discover the magic of Bath this Christmas. Plan ahead at visitbath.co.uk slash Christmas. It's another Friday morning. Yet another chilly day. So ditch the British winter and chase the sun across the globe with British Airways from London Gatwick. Reach the top of Mount TD or relax on a sandy beach. Fly from London Gatwick to Tenerife with British Airways. With flights and seven nights hotel from just £349 per person. Don't miss out. Book by November the 12th at ba.com slash winter sun. With British Airways, incredible is within reach. Booking fees and conditions may apply. Limited availability selected flights in March. Whatever job you're searching for, you can find it on LinkedIn. First jobs, flexible jobs, work from home on a Friday jobs, advertising jobs, accounting jobs, HR, PR, even ER jobs, Soho jobs, Shoreditch jobs, keep me away from the central line jobs, banking jobs, building jobs, never ever boring jobs, small jobs, big jobs, lunch in borough market jobs, or even voiceover jobs, which is how I ended up recording this ad. Search millions of jobs on LinkedIn and find one meant for you. Freezing Friday mornings like this are cruel. You cough, you splutter, so does your car. Its battery dead, killed by an icy claw. Will anyone stand up to winter? Yes, you, come to Halfords. We fit new batteries on the spot from just £15. And we're open late seven days a week. See Halfords.com for opening hours. Here in Chiswick. Ready for the cold snap? Ready for anything. 
Halfords for life's journeys. Batteries sold separately. Selected vehicles only in most stores. Bloomberg Television. Here's Taylor Riggs. What can be done to preserve utility grids from the effects of climate change? Our next guest is working on that very question. It is Ashley Philipson, and she is the project leader for Grid Resilience and Intelligence Platform, a.k.a. GRIP. So, Ashley, great to have you. And you were talking about how you were finally in year two of three of this project. Yes. Over that time period, what have been some of these major challenges that we're confronting? So, uh, unfortunately, wildfires, you know, here on the West Coast have become pretty regular just like the seasons and same thing on the east coast we're having you know regular hurricanes that are you know increasing in power and we have to learn how to deal with these how can we have a more flexible adaptable grid uh, the grid infrastructure is some of the oldest legacy infrastructure uh, that we've had in the u.s and so trying to figure out ways to essentially have new tools and solutions in our toolbox uh, like ai like machine learning that can help anticipate absorb and recover from some of these grid events so walk me through some of the solutions that you found so far we're looking at things like predictive analytics. So how can we look at actually figuring out where crews should be placed in advance of a wind event? In our absorption use case, we're trying to use a, a method called virtual islanding that actually uses machine learning to figure out how can we do power balancing with water heaters, electric vehicles, uh, solar inverters. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 Four hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. The risk on mood that's permeated global financial markets this week is showing signs of abating as European stocks fall along with stocks in Asia and U.S. stock index futures edge lower. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are down three and a half points this morning. Dow futures down 17. NASDAQ futures down 14. And the DAX in Germany is down two tenths of a percent. Ten-year Treasury up two thirty seconds. Yield 1.90 percent. And the yield on the two-year 1.66 percent. NYMEX crude oil down 1.7 percent or 98 cents at 56.17 a barrel. COMEX gold is little change. Changed up a dollar ten to fourteen sixty seven fifty an ounce. The euro one point one zero four one against the dollar. British pound one point two eight one four, and the yen one oh nine point three six. And today we are watching for reports on wholesale inventories and consumer sentiment, both out at ten o'clock Wall Street time. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Before the impeachment inquiry goes public next week, investigators hope to hear from one more witness today, but that witness will likely be a no-show. Acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney was asked to testify today as part of the impeachment inquiry. Yesterday, Democrats released more transcripts from the inquiry. Senior State Department official George Kent testified President Trump wanted nothing less than President Zelensky to go to the microphone and say investigators are tied to Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton. In Thursday night football, the Raiders beat the Chargers 26-24. In the NBA, the Celtics won. In the NHL, the Rangers won. The Islanders and Devils lost. The Capitals were winners. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg, Nathan. All right, Michael, thank you. It's 519 on Wall Street. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak. Let's get a check of this market on this Friday morning. Julian Lafargue joins us, head equity specialist at Barclays. And uh, Julian, Karen just mentioned the risk on sentiment appears to be showing signs of abating as we continue to watch developments on the U.S.-China trade front. How would you gauge sentiment at this moment? Thank you very much, um, and, and good morning. Well, clearly we, we can say that if, if you compare the market today versus, call it two weeks ago, the, the uh, sentiment in, is much more singing with regards to um, trade war and, and the possible um, <clears throat> trade agreement that could be signed in the coming in the coming months not only or coming weeks not only the market feels that um, this agreement is is to come but the details of it are pretty encouraging in the sense that the market is looking for tariff um, the December tariffs to be removed potentially the September one increasingly at least to be removed as well uh, it's almost like like a best case scenario so clearly the, the sentiment has improved massively 
So then would you say that uh, phase one trade deal being implemented is fully priced into this market right now? It, it, when you look at where valuations are on, on the U.S. market and when you look at um, earnings expectations for next year, there's clearly a great deal of optimism um, in, in the price at those levels. And uh, it could be a case that if we do get the agreement signed in the coming weeks, it, it's, it's a bit of um, sell the um, sell, sell the news once it, it's formally agreed, uh, because clearly the market has read it in anticipation of of that agreement being signed. And any disappointment, whether it, it could be a delay into 2020, or if the details are not as good as, as people expect, could lead to um, a slight weakness. You're seeing signs of sell the news in the U.S. market. What about emerging markets? They're certainly exposed to the uh, U.S.-China trade story. Clearly, um, that, that would have repercussion across across the world. Um, and what we've seen over the past couple of weeks is market that have been trading so far, namely um, Europe, but also emerging market rebounding on, on those hopes. Um, they would be affected if if this agreement is, is postponed or, or cancelled, that, that's for sure. Um, and, and the rebound that we've seen in those, those markets has been driven by the current situation where things were looking to, to improve gradually. Um, and if that sentiment were to change, then they, there is potentially more downside in those markets than there is in the U.S. market at this stage. Do you see that downside uh, due to uh, macroeconomic factors? Uh, it, it has more to do with, I think, investor sentiment positioning, which remains on the lighter side, but clearly people, I think, have cut their short exposure and, and maybe more neutral than, than they used to be. Um, as we've seen over the past few months, the impact from a macroeconomic perspective of the trade war hasn't been that big. Um, yes, we've seen growth slowing down, but it hasn't been a catastrophe. So I think the downside would come more from disappointment and therefore the market suddenly deciding to pay less for future earnings because uncertainty is back on the table. I'm curious to get your view on uh, UK equities ahead of the election there next month. And with uh, Brexit uncertainty still uh, front and center, I would think, for investors over there. What's your view on uh, UK stocks? Well, we've been talking about investor sentiment turning much more positive on the U.S. market, the Eurozone market, and and emerging markets. One place in the world where this sentiment hasn't really turned yet is on the U.K. side. And I think over the last three years, you've seen a lot of investors pulling back assets from from the country and from the, the, the U.K. equity market. As we get some type of resolution, whether it's good or, or bad or call it um, soft or hard Brexit, we feel that there is a lot of potential for those assets to, to come back to the region. Um, and it's a market, if you look at the U.K. market, it's a market that is deeply undervalued, uh, more than any other developed or emerging market at this stage. It's also a market that offers a very attractive dividend yield. If you look at the large cap UK equity, the FTSE 100, you get 4.5% dividend yield. Uh, and we all know that right, it's quite difficult to get that type of yield anywhere in the world. So once clarity emerges, we do feel that there is potential for this market to, to rebound. It's going to be a bumpy ride until we get that clarity. Uh, but that's something that we definitely think investors should have on their radar for 2020. Julian Lafargue, Head Equity Specialist at Barclays. Good to get your insights on this Friday morning. Thanks so much for being with us here on Bloomberg Daybreak. And uh, just taking a look at the FTSE in London right now, it's down three-tenths percent. S&P futures lower by three points. Dow futures down 17. NASDAQ futures down 12. And a half points. This is Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Market Minute. Struggling retailer Sears plans to close 96 more stores, leaving it with around 180 when all is said and done. Stores on this latest list will be closed by February. Going out of business sales start December 2nd. The new owner of Sears and Kmart called Transform cites a difficult retail environment. 
Stock futures are slipping a bit this morning as Trump administration officials downplay expectations for any imminent breakthrough in U.S.-China trade talks. Although officials on both sides did say that the countries have agreed to roll back tariffs on each other's goods in stages as negotiations continue. And we have the major stock benchmarks on Wall Street starting out at record highs today. The Dow yesterday jumped 182 points. We'll get an update today on how the consumer is feeling lately. The University of Michigan releases its consumer sentiment report for November so far. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their business strategically. Yet, the most competitive managers in the market know, with the right partner and a flexible operating platform, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm Steve Meyer, President, Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com. Com slash seize change. Business. Imagine yourself 50 years from now. Have you made London proud? Society predicts you won't have done much. We predict the opposite. Because we see what you could be. There are British soldiers on training missions around the world right now, and they could use someone like you. Find where you belong at your local Army Careers Centre. Rochester Row, Victoria, London. Your army needs you. Whatever job you're searching for, you can find it on LinkedIn. First jobs, flexible jobs, work from home on a Friday jobs, advertising jobs, accounting jobs, HR, PR, even ER jobs, Soho jobs, Shoreditch jobs, keep me away from the central line jobs, banking jobs, building jobs, never ever boring jobs, small jobs, big jobs, lunch in borough market jobs, or even voiceover jobs, which is how I ended up recording this ad. Search millions of jobs on LinkedIn and find one meant for you. It's another Friday morning. Yet another cold day. So ditch the British winter and chase the sun across the globe with British Airways from London Gatwick and witness luscious scenery and calming waves. Fly from London Gatwick to St Lucia with British Airways with flights and seven nights hotel from just £739 per person. Don't miss out. Book by November the 12th at ba.com slash winter sun with British Airways. Incredible is within reach. Booking fees and conditions may apply. Limited availability. Selected flights in March. Just because you travel doesn't mean you can't keep your routine. The more obstacles travel puts between us and our well-being, the more we strive to work well. At Westin Hotels and Resorts, we're focused on empowering your well-being. With Westin Meetings, you work and feel your best with nutritious snacks and nourishing smoothies that give you the energy you need to power through any meeting. Don't leave your well-being behind. We give you the choice to get up or to rise. Search Westin online to find out more. Westin, let's rise. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the world's most fantastical, sensational number. 83 million. Tonight's Euro Millions jackpot is a massive 83 million pounds. Euro Millions, celebrating 25 years of the National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. Estimated jackpot. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. Spot a bargain in the Debenham Spectacular event. Up to 30% off throughout the store and up to 15% off beauty and fragrance. Shop now in store and at Debenhams.com. Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM. Channel 119 and around the globe, the Bloomberg Business app and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. It's 5:30 on Wall Street. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager. 
And I'm Karen Moscow. We are just about four hours away from the opening of U.S. trading. Let's get you up to date in the news you need to know at this hour. U.S. futures and stocks in Europe are lower as the trade war continues to dominate market sentiment. The White House has confirmed an agreement to roll back tariffs and phases as part of any deal with China, but some healthy skepticism remains. We get more from Bloomberg's Dan Ten Kate in Hong Kong. The president has really blown up the talk several times, so until something is signed on the dotted line, it's really hard to say any Anything is concluded, so that's always a risk until they actually sign this thing. Senior White House advisor Kellyanne Conway said President Trump is anxious to sign a deal, but trade advisor Peter Navarro warns that the current agreement includes no measure to remove tariffs. Now, data out of China show exports declined less than expected in October. Here with details is Bloomberg Daybreak Asia anchor Brian Curtis in Hong Kong. Exports fell 0.9% from a year earlier, better than the estimate of minus 3.9%. Imports off 6.4%, also better than estimated. China's trade surplus with the United States, $26.42 billion. Now, the improvement may be down to optimism over a partial trade deal with the United States. It should provide relief to companies hit by falling profits and weak global and domestic demand. In Hong Kong, Brian Curtis, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Brian, thank you. Meanwhile, the slump in China's car market shows no signs of slowing. Auto sales fell 6% in October. That's the 16th decline in the past 17 months. Now, on the earnings front, shares of Disney are up 5% in early trading after profit topped estimates and anticipation is also high for the debut of Disney Plus next week. Bloomberg's John Tucker joins us live with details. John. Yeah, and Nathan, the world's largest entertainment company, is betting its future on Disney Plus. Its Netflix-style service which debuts on Tuesday. It's now reached an agreement to put the streaming service on Amazon, Samsung, and LG devices. It's also cheaper than Netflix at $7 a month. Investing in the future isn't cheap, though. Losses in the Disney division that houses streaming totaled $740 million last quarter. John Tucker, Bloomberg Day. 